Well, hey, 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 it's time for Ask the Tech Guys, our last show of 2023. Coming up, Chris Marquardt will talk about how to take pictures of the Northern Lights. Ooh, and I'm Micah Sargent, and we answer the age-old question, how do I take my VHS tapes and make them digital? Ooh, how fun. And then, precocious two-and-a-half-year-old, what's a great electronics gift for him. All that and more coming up next on Ask the Tech Guys, our last show of the year. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Ask the Tech Guys with Micah Sargent and Leo Laporte. Episode 2005, recorded Sunday, December 17th, 2023. Chaos monkeys in my Rolodex. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Well, hey, hey, hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> it's time for <laughs> the last Ask the Tech Guys of the Year. Indubitably. Hello, Micah Sargent. Hello, Leo Laporte. <laughs> don't, don't shake my head. The mustache. <laughs> my loose. mustache is slowly Shakes but surely falling. We had to do this because look how beautifully dressed Micah is. You look like an Edwardian prince. Oh, thank you. I look like Captain Kangaroo after a long night out. <laughs> but... This is a show where you answer your tech questions if you dare ask them <laughs> at 888-724-2884. That's the phone number. That is the phone number you call. You may also visit the URL call.twit.tv, which you can do uh, on your phone or on your computer. We suggest the phone because it makes it very easy. You type in that URL, it takes you to this little screen where it says, hey, join this Zoom, and then you hang out in the Zoom, very important, there will be a button somewhere at the bottom of your screen if you're on your phone or you're on your computer that is a little hand and will say, raise hand. You want to click or tap that button. That lets us know that you're not just hanging out in the Zoom, but in, that you indeed do have a question. Uh, you can also email us, atg at twit.tv. Uh, you can send in text. You can send in audio. You can send in video. We'll get those questions. And of note, your questions today need not be holiday related, despite what? the fact that we ourselves are. But if they are, bonus points in my heart from you. Absolutely. Jolly good, my, governor. Micah, my, 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 your mustache. There you go. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Ah! <laughs> Anybody got any crazy glue I could use? <laughs> Uh, all right. What else? What do we do this time of year? We do the uh, stories of the year. Do we? <laughs> I threw you with that one. Shocking. Now, we, we actually we could, but we don't. No, and we won't. And there are plenty of. We got best ofs next week. We do. We got uh, which will be fun. So that's the twenty four. That's Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Well, or no, we don't have a best of for us though. We're taking the weeks off. That's right. We, just we didn't are make time a best off. of. I don't know why. Because I guess the the editors said, you know what, Leo and Micah, there's nothing. They said, look, nothing, nothing was good, good this year to repeat. So <laughs> no, we're just going to take two weeks off. So this is our last one of the year, and we will be back on uh the 7th January January 7th, 7th. if my math first, that is, your math is, is mathing good job uh but there will be a, a best of for twit on mm -hmm. christmas eve and actually christmas eve is our holiday show which is the old fart which is not good but there's a fire burning so anyway the old farts christmas show with jeff jarvis steve gibson rod pile and doc searles that's really going to be fun and me the old timers uh, talking about the good old days, but also I think, and really importantly, because we've seen it all, what the future holds mm. is, all, I think our context helps understand this. Uh, and then there will be a, uh, a best of on New Year's Eve for Twitter. Many of our shows will have best ofs all next week. Do you have holiday plans? Uh, yeah, I, just the, the typical holiday plans of spending time with some family. Uh, Do, is there a Wordle in your holiday plans? <laughs> There's not, but I saw this story about what we've learned from Wordle. 515 million Wordles. Uh, this is the New York Times Word Puzzle, solved in the year 2023. 
And it says, for the first time, we've analyzed how players performed in, in half a billion Wordle games and the results with strategies, the Wordle bot. I didn't even know they had a Wordle bot. That seems like cheating to use yeah, a Wordle bot. Yeah, I don't want to use the Wordle bot. I mean, honestly, really. Of the 30 starting words, the most popular, and this surprises me, do you have a starting word you use over and over on Wordle? I, I don't play it anymore. I used to use Tiger. Ah, interesting. Because, of course, you want to try E-T-A-I-O-N. Those are the most common uh, letters in the English language. And then S-H-R-D-L-U. Uh, I use tears because it has E-A-T, but it also has R and S. And S, I feel like, and especially if you get an S at the end, that eliminates the possibility of plurals. Yeah, I thought there were never plurals. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I seem to remember someone telling me that. Maybe that's Don't worry not the about case. plurals. Well, people have been using a do, but guess what? The New York Times says it's terrible. Oh. Do not use a do or uh, audio. Ah. That's yours, John? Yeah. yeah. Audio is So one here's the I most popular like Wordle starting words. A do, stare, slate, audio, raise, crane. So you, this is a word puzzle if you haven't played it, and you're guessing. You have five guesses to guess a five-letter word. But you get to start, it's kind of like mastermind. You get to start with a word and then it tells you how many are right and how many are in the correct position. So the starting word really makes a big difference. So everybody likes it you for some reason. I mean, it's 8%. It's not overwhelmingly the favorite. I Mine, tears, is down here way in the less than 1% category. However, starting with a do or audio, John, puts human players at a disadvantage. And by the way, what the hell, who cares if it's not a human player? Forget right. the non-human players. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about I them. I don't care about them. Uh, so if you start with, uh, compared to starting with slate, which apparently they think is a very good word, a Jew will give you 132 extra guesses over a 12-month period. Uh, 10 this, extra guesses a month. This really feels like it's... Over analysis. Uh, what is that? Navel gazing? Navel gazing. It is. But you know what? It made the New York Times a lot of money. It did indeed. So their navel is full of gold. It's a golden navel. <laughs> That's why they're staring at they're it. They're staring. Yeah, I'd stare at it for my game. <laughs> if full I looked of gold, down and suddenly you? there was gold. Whoa, there. there's gold <laughs> in them, their navels. <laughs> did you see the story about Mark Zuckerberg's secret oh, Hawaiian compound? Oh, my goodness. One you of can't the, talk about it. It's secret. <laughs> but somebody is, apparently. Yeah, I love Can we the, the line in it. This was my favorite line. And it's very near the beginning. And it says, um, oh, come on. Where is it? Basically, it says, oh, here we go. Um, Almost anyone who passes compound security from carpenters to electricians to painters to security guards is bound by a strict non-disclosure agreement, according to several workers involved who in the project. Who disclosed it? <laughs> Yeah, well, they didn't give their names, and they're hoping they won't get fired, but people do get fired. Uh, it is on Kauai, the beautiful garden island of Hawaii. The uh, Hawaiians are not thrilled about it. He's blocked off the beach, which you're not supposed to do, and people are upset. The, na the people who are native to the island say, who is this robotic fellow? Uh, some of the weird things, though, we learned, first of all, it is one of the largest building projects in history. <laughs> yeah, private. Largest private. Private. Uh he bought the land, a lot of it, starting in 2014, and he kept buying properties. So it's a fairly big share of the island, 1,400 acres. The funniest thing is there is a 5,000-square-foot safe room or mm -hmm. bunker that is underground, which means he's planning for the apocalypse. Its own power source, its own food water, sources. Own food sources. Uh, it, according to uh, the Wired, it'll cost $270 million in the land alone. Um, anyway, so I think this is, I think this is just uh, a leak of what every billionaire is doing, Absolutely. which is building a hidey hole yeah. while the rest of us, I don't know what, what's going to happen. Are we going to run out of food, water? Is the earth, earth going to get too warm to survive? Who knows? But they're planning for it, which they're is prepared. just uh, kind of awful. I mean, first of all, what kind of life are you and Priscilla and the kids going to have underground in a 5,000 square foot bunker for years? That sounds awful. I was and everybody the up there is dead or sick or saying, feed me. I mean, knocking on the door. That is, Let us in. you know, would you want to do no, that? No, I'd stay no. up with the rest of the people, do what I could to help. And if it, you know, if if uh, I starve to death, I starve to death. But I don't want to live in a five thousand no. 
That's crazy. It tells you a little something about the the uh, psychology. You know, some of them are reconditioning old ICBM missile silos to uh, be, you know, un again underground. It was the it wasn't it the plot of Silo that uh, Apple TV shows they're all living mm -hmm. underground. And who's that? Is oh, this is uh, this is my favorite Fallout seventy six, isn't it? I love four. this four seventy four. Four, Fallout, Fallout 4. 4. Okay. That's your little robot friend. Did you play that game excessively? Is that why you... I played three. Four was... Eh. <coughs> I like 76, although I know it, people didn't like it, but I liked it. Yeah, it was, it, it was okay, but just it wasn't the same. Anyway, yeah, it is like Fallout, because you come out of a bunker in Fallout, don't you? Yeah, into the, into the world, which has somehow been destroyed by nuclear war or something. Anyway, let's not think about that. This is the holiday season. Let's think jolly, jolly thoughts. Oh, dear. Not about <laughs> You're going to go where I think you're going. Oh, no, you. you go there. I just, I, w I thought we were going to talk about pig butchering. I thought you might. <laughs> oh. This is a jolly thought. So do you know what pig butchering is? I had no idea. I do now. We've talked about it on the show. It. I just you, didn't know the term. You get those messages all the time that just say, hello. Hello. Hi. Um, or I get a lot of more complicated ones like, hey, Joanne, I met, I'm not going to be able to come into work today. I'm feeling terrible. Or, uh, yeah, I can't go to that party. You know, they try all kinds yeah, of things. I'm, oh, uh, it was so nice to meet you, Stephanie, at that party the other night. It's always not your name. Mm -hmm. And it's often something that you would go, oh, gosh, I hope she uh, I hope she gets that flat fixed or whatever. Because what they want you to do is say, oh, hold on, this is not Stephanie. This is Micah. Uh, I'm sorry, you got the wrong number. In which they say, oh, well, hi, Micah. I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, so after we talk for a little bit, here's a photo of me. What yeah. are you thinking about? So apparently they call it pig butchering. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> because they're basically it's a scam. You figured that out, I think, a long time ago. And they're trying to get money out of isolated and lonely people. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh with the promises of friendship and love. They never offer me friendship and love. Mostly they just want me to buy crypto. But anyway. Yeah, ours usually end up being crypto, but these these are even slower burns. These yeah. seem to take a little while and they really try to kind of befriend you. And essentially they end up making, yeah, as a lonely or isolated person, this person becomes your friend or convince you that they are in love with you, you and that you're in love with them. have a name for this called catfishing. Yeah. I don't know why we need pig butchering. I know, I don't know why it has a anyway, name. Yeah. But the, I think that's uh, federal prosecutors because they say, they have four indictments and two arrests have been made in an international pig butchering scheme that cost victims more than this is what's sad. $80 wow. million, dollars, usually elderly, lonely people. They take their life savings. Four men have been indicted. Two arrests have been made. I guess the other two probably are out of the U.S. Lou Jong, Justin Walker, Joseph Wong, all California residents. Consp <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Conspired with Illinois resident Hai Long Ju to launder the illicit proceeds of their scam. Pig butchering comes from the Chinese phrase Sha Ju Pan. Uh, so it, I guess maybe the Chinese invented it. It's cold messaging victims. Anyway, don't fall for that. Yeah, if someone messages you out of the blue, whether they're talking to you or, or mentioning someone else's name, just be aware. And as we always say on this show, we know many of you who are watching this show are sophisticated and understand the implications here. This is an opportunity to tell family members, hey, if you get these messages out of the blue, it's not someone who's there to be your friend. It is something that you and should not And it's not, not a wrong number. You right. know, you're being, this is what really annoys me is they're playing off these people's generosity and, and warmth of spirit. And, oh, and, yeah. I'm so sorry. You know, you've got a flat. Uh, is there anything I can do to help? Oh, no. But by the way, can you give me a million dollars? That would help. So anyway, uh, and I think there's a little cryptocurrency involved, of course. So sad because cryptocurrency had all this promise and ended up just being a way for scammers to rip people off. Mm hmm. Well, there's the news. That was jolly. I mean, let me play. Let me. Jolly, jolly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I coughed because <clears throat> I swallowed my mustache. Okay. You know what? Got to retire the old I think stash. I, I think I will too. In fact, oh. I should retire this at. Actually ripped that time. Did it? Woo. It actually was sticking. It stuck. Of all the things. <laughs> you don't want it to fall off. And then when you do, you can't. 
888-724-2884. We go to the phones. As soon as my hat stops. <laughs> Is it done? Are you done? All right. Let us, uh, who should we, John Ashley, boy producer has. has I thought some... we were agreeing that we would only do the boy producer for one <laughs> show. <laughs> did we agree to that? I think you did say oh, that. Oh, all right. <laughs> hey, old man. <laughs> What's up? Okay, old man. Um, yeah, I'm the old man. Well, you call me boy producer, so it's only fair. Uh, let's pick up on a, a wireless <laughs> caller. <laughs> let's press the button and see what we can get. On the old horn, get Eight. on, get on. You ever say that? To God? Get get on the horn. Get on the horn. Of get course. on the horn. I don't know where that comes from. I think it's horn shaped, right? I think it's more like <laughs> trumpeting your announcement. Yeah, get on the horn. Ah, I got oh, maybe because think about the old phones where it was kind of a horn that you spoke into. You know, you hung it on the side. <laughs> oh yeah, it was roll the thing. Hello, Martha. Yeah. Give me, uh, give me Joe. Um, call or press star six to unmute and say hello. Hello, Leo. Hello, Micah. Hi, hello. what's your name and where are you calling from? First name. Uh, this is, uh, Kenny from Cottontown, Tennessee. Are you oh, guys my good friend, Kenny. Kenny. Hello, Kenny. Cottontown Kenny, we call him. Uh, don't know why. What's up, Kenny? Oh, um, that's because I live in a city called that. But oh, anyway, that's okay. I have a, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Anyway, I got a Netflix question and a little IT story I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, so last Friday, I was toying around with uh, at work. You know, we have uh, a company agreement with HP to provide laptops to all the supervisors that I work with, the managers and so forth. And one of them, you know, our company occasionally has the IT group throws out like these uh, software updates on occasion to update. Uh, systems and apparently what had happened was is that it accidentally bricked one of the older laptops that they had and we were trying to figure out what it was and and normally in the cases like that when you have something like that it always has something to do with power and sure enough it was low on power and thankfully i found a good power supply initially it had USB C port but it did not use it because it was an older one from 2018 where obviously it couldn't just you know charge and so thankfully we had a a port where I could put it in there and we're able to get it to where it could update and it works fine. But this uh, manager was kind of worried about it for a little bit because he didn't know why it wouldn't turn on. As it turns out, it was in sort of a hibernation mode. It wasn't totally turned off, but it just didn't have enough power to finish it because it just didn't have enough juice in the battery, as they say. So Thankfully, we've figured it out and it's now up and running, even if it is an older model. But I was able to kind of toy with it a little bit just to see so I can keep getting my uh, tricks with IT done and along with printers. That's and so great. Forth. Had he not been charging it? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. After four hours, my computer stops working. You know, one thing that does is the case, which is a little weird, is uh, the way a lot of laptops work the power goes through the battery. Uh, so the battery isn't like a secondary thing that it switches over to when it's not plugged in. The power is literally going through it uh, in series. And what that means is that when the battery stops working, it's too old, stops taking a charge, often those laptops stop working. So here's a little pro tip. If your, ba if your battery's not charging and your laptop won't come on, if you can, remove the battery. Because what that does is it takes the battery out of the series, and now the power is going directly to the laptop. And often, that's a way to get an older laptop working again. And it has to be an older battery, but laptop to remove the battery, <laughs> frankly. Sad to say. <clears throat> but removing those batteries and keeping it plugged in, you can at least use it. If you can get a replacement battery, all the better. What's your question about Netflix, Cotton Town, Kenny? Well, uh, I don't know. You're familiar with Lewis Rothman, right? Oh, I love uh, Lewis Rothman. He, he's the uh, he's a guy who had a Manhattan repair. I think he's kind of given up his business, the Manhattan repair business, yeah. and became well, an he expert. Moved to Austin. Ah, okay. Uh, but he became an moved expert Austin, in, in kind yeah. of right to repair. He was a big right to repair expert. Of course, YouTube uh, celebrity. You know, uh, and uh, he's yeah, two million subscribers to his uh, YouTube yeah. page. Yeah, and it's I'm one of them. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's come out with several videos on Netflix in which the biggest gripe is is that if you're trying to watch something on, let's say, 4K or 1080p, 
like I did this morning, I was trying to watch something on Netflix and even without a VPN, like I use the express VPN air code, uh, router that I've used in the past because surprise, surprise, it won't work with it, but, uh, it just will not pick up anything 1080p or HD in real good quality, you know, right off the bat. You know, you have to wait for it to load and everything. Right. And I use Apple TV for Netflix. It's almost like, and he mentioned it in one of his videos that unless you use, like you, you play by their rules and use like their certain smart TVs, you're not going to get like the full 4K 1080p experience. And he kind of called it out on that per se. And I guess my question is to you is, is there a reason why Netflix streams well on certain devices and not so nice on others? It used to be, and maybe this has changed. Uh, but here, I have a little problem with most of these YouTubers, including Lewis, which is uh, they get views by being outraged, being mm -hmm. angry, being there's something wrong. Et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, you know, boy, that'll really wear you down after a while if you're angry at everything all the time. So I think that, just like spending too much time on Twitter, spending too much time watching these angry YouTube videos can really wear you down and make you think the whole thing is falling apart and the crap shack's going to hell and God, they're, 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 and they not and it's pretty soon you become an old man yelling at the clouds. So just a word of warning: uh, you don't be like me. Uh, you know, watch some upbeat stuff every once in a while. But YouTube really kind of the <laughs> algorithm kind of pushes them in that direction. In any event, it used to mm -hmm. be, and I'll have to check and see if it is that actually the best way to watch Netflix was on apple because so here's how think about how netflix's uh, architecture is you've got netflix corporation the home office with all those movies on servers now they probably in fact i'm sure they use a cdn so those movies just yes. like for us are moved out to a the edge closer to you on a cdn and the cdn has a copy of the movie and so the movie's going to play back from that server apple because they wanted the best quality, and this used to be, and I think it's still true, said to, at Netflix, forget that, we'll be your CDN for Apple TV users. They use Akamai. And we will, because we want the exp ex experience to be the best on Apple TV, cash all your movies, and they won't be coming from you or your CDN. You won't be competing with other Netflix users. They'll be coming from Apple directly. And that, in the past, has always given Apple the TV the best, uh, I think, the best Netflix quality. Netflix quality does go up and down. It depends on your bandwidth, of course. And this is the problem. It's hard to see where in the chain this is falling apart. But I've had good experiences with yeah, Apple TV. I, I used to have this issue where it would take a while to load. And once I just plugged in with Ethernet, uh, with the new Apple TV 4K, I have no issues with Netflix loading immediately. Only in rare occasions where... You know, you hit that perfect time where everybody else in the vicinity is also watching. Will I get a blur from time to time? But outside of that, yeah, I and that was switching from using Wi-Fi to using Ethernet. That really, of course, made a difference. As I you do expect. that on all of my TVs. I, I you may remember a few years ago we went and had somebody crawl, crawl around in the attic and drop Ethernet mm -hmm. to all the places where TVs are because always hardwired it makes a huge better. difference. Always. But and so that's yeah. one thing. Uh, Netflix quality itself, I think, has often been slammed for being over compressed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what Alex Lindsay has said. I haven't noticed that personally. Yeah, I haven't had an issue with it, but maybe I'm just not as. This is why it's hard uh, to it's hard to assess sensitive. because it could be Alex is watching on Wi-Fi. You know, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know what everybody's exactly exact situation what's going is. On. Hmm. And that goes back to your point, Leo, with the YouTuber thing. I think a, I, I've seen this a lot with tech reviewers in general is a lack of uh, what boils down to empathy, meaning that they end up believing that their experience is everyone's experience. Yeah. And so if I have this experience, that means that this is the way it is globally. And I'm going to complain about it in that way. And it happens to be the case that, you know, you uh, identify that this was a problem that you were having as well. And so it works in this case, but simply because one person is having an experience does not necessarily mean that it's uh, global worldwide and you're going to find people who say, no, I, like I just did. No, I haven't had this issue. So yeah, I, I don't, this is a problem we have and we always have to fight with mm -hmm. is our own tendency to say, whatever's happened to me is happening it's to everybody. Ha yeah. That's human and nature. Versa, we oh, have to it never happens to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it's human nature. And, uh, it takes, uh, it's one of the reasons experienced tech journalists often, are better because they've spent a lot of time learning not to do that. Exactly. And they have had in the past. They used to have mm -hmm. editors. Nobody has editors anymore, but they used to have. 
I wonder, I'm looking mm -hmm. for Netflix's uh, network architecture because uh, it is a very interesting architecture. You know, they use ISPs, for instance, uh, as uh, also as, the, as their CDN. So oh, big ISPs like Comcast will have a Netflix server on-prem, which you're getting it from. Um, here's a, let's see. It looks like here's a here's a network diagram on LinkedIn, and it is it is crazy. But if you think about it, to me this has always been amazing: is how the network architectures for play, massive operations like Facebook, Netflix, Google, what they must do, and and really you know when people I hear people including Lewis Rossman saying you know Netflix has taken five seconds to load a YouTube video. It just cracks me up <laughs> because I come from a time when five seconds, wow, it would buffer for a minute before it would start playing back in the real, vi you know, real days, the real audio days. So, uh, uh, you know, if Netflix is, I mean, if uh, Google's slowing it down, that's a different thing. But this is an interesting uh, article from tech.bit. Uh, it's called Inside Netflix, a deep dive into its cutting edge system architecture. Uh, I find this stuff fascinating. This one's from October, so it's not too old. Hmm which means it's probably a fairly recent. Uh, let me see if I can open this image. Um, oh, now it's doing all the, all the things everybody these days has to do to survive, including us, popping up a newsletter thing. But this is an interesting architecture. You've got Open Connect, which is Netflix. In fact, there's a good article about Netflix Open Connect. This is their uh, system This kind of for doing this. And you look at this crazy architecture. So... You know, I think it depends on so many things, not just your home network, but your ISP, mm -hmm. whether your ISP is caching Netflix for you, the device you're using, somebody in our Discord saying they like Netflix best on Roku, that may well be, but it, but who, but mm -hmm. why is that, right? So all of this is very complicated because they are serving so much data to so many people for a long time. Uh and maybe this is still the case, especially if you had a cable internet, it would get slow around 7 p.m. every night. Mm -hmm. And it was because everybody's watching Netflix, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is yeah. one of the arguments Netflix has for Comcast and others to have a Netflix server in their facility because right. that speeds things up quite a bit. So it, it, I wish we could say oh, we know categorically what's going on or what the best way to watch Netflix is. I don't think it's as simple as that. It There's isn't. so many devices involved. No. Yeah. No, that really is really a good example, really just how the Internet itself works, regardless of whether it's Netflix or YouTube or even Twit. I mean, it just right. it takes a lot to put together. Well, you've heard us talk home. about Cashfly. That's our CDN. Netflix Open Connect is their CDN. That's the one where they put servers uh, in ISPs if they can. Uh, not all ISPs go along with that. Most of them do because it's good for their customers. It's, yeah, exactly. That's it's saving it's, them customer support it's calls. It's so complicated. Uh, and, uh, you mm -hmm. know. They have, uh, they use Chaos Monkey, a tool that randomly terminates mm -hmm. instances to make sure that your system can tolerate failures. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're doing so much stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have some friends who do this kind of thing for uh, uh, Facebook and other companies. You have a few Chaos Monkey friends? I have some Chaos <laughs> Monkeys in my, uh, my Rolodex. <laughs> and I have to say, it is a highly paid position because you're doing yeah. magic. You are mm -hmm. doing magic. Yeah. So. Um, but so much magic that it's almost impossible, Kenny, for us to know what the the path oh, from yeah. Netflix to you is. That path has a lot of moving parts. Uh, this is a yeah, good article if I you want to read it. Tech.bit.com. Yeah. It's a tech blog, and they've they've done a really good write up of the Netflix uh, architecture. We'll put it in the show notes. Uh, there's a lot of information in here, and uh, and it really uh -huh. is it's quite impressive. They also have <clears throat> ways you can ping it and so forth if you'd like to check you know you could spend some energy mm -hmm. figuring out what's going on with your <laughs> connection if you really care that's cool yeah yeah so yeah that maybe you cool. should check that out and uh this is a good article go. I, yeah I'm, I'm very impressed yeah. mm -hmm. chaos monkey is a tool developed by netflix to randomly break things <laughs> that's a good name isn't it it is <laughs> Yeah. In conclusion, yeah, it sure is. he writes, Netflix architecture is an intricate blend of cutting edge technologies and strategies designed for global scale fault tolerance and a high degree of personalization, making it a leader in the streaming industry. Behind every play button on Netflix is an intricate web of technologies and strategies. 
uh, I think that's fairly uh, fairly accurate. Yeah, I bet you Netflix has a white paper on this. I know they do on Open Connect. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet you there's other places you can you can read more about uh, Netflix. Interesting system. Yeah. Hey, it's good to talk to you, Kenny. How's the how's the work going? You liking it? <clears throat> Oh, it's, it's going good. It's like you said about uh, making magic. That's kind of how they feel about me whenever there's an nice. issue with like a laptop or printers. You know, like it's like I was just saying to Micah, you know, I always hardwired the printers at our workstations. Yes. Because we can get things done fast with yeah. Wi-Fi. So that advice does go into effect, not just with printers or Apple TV. It's everything like that. And I do want to say I did watch Oppenheimer on Apple TV yesterday. And I know you guys were talking about Chris Nolan and how he uses audio and the sound quality. I didn't have that much of a problem with it when I watched it. That's because I probably have it hardwired, surprise, surprise, yeah. with a Sony speaker. In fact, everything I have, audio and video is Sony. And it is sad that, you know, Sony is kind of, I don't want to say it's totally given up on TVs because of Samsung. You know, Samsung's really kind of, taken the market per se, but I've always been a Sony guy for many years and I've always felt like they make good quality and hopefully down the road, they maybe will make good quality products as far as audio again, but it's a long trip for them to go if they want to challenge Samsung. But yeah, I always felt that like watching Oppenheimer and no problem with the audio. I guess it just depends on what you use, per se. Well, let's not forget, as Scott Wilkinson told us, the uh, best TV of the year <clears throat> in the TV shootout that they do every year, the Value Systems TV shootout, was a Sony. So Sony's still making the best mm -hmm. TVs. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you so much, Kenny. Take care. All right. You guys have a good day. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry holiday, Christmas. Cotton Town Kenny. Cotton Town Kenny. <laughs> Why do we call him Cotton Town, Kenny? Why? Because he's from Cotton Town. Oh, I thought nobody knew. No. All right. Okay, Wunderkind. It's not better, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's better. Um, <laughs> young and bright. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Actually, do you want to uh, answer uh, answer an email? Oh, my gosh. Now, I think I might have misarranged this. Did you, oh, you, you came around here and snuck around? Well, we were also busy. Is Rob's the one I should start with? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Do I need my monocle for this so I, I can so. read it? So you can actually see it, yeah. Rob writes, great show. Thank you so much for the education. I still remember watching your show on cable. Yes, remember Cable? I did. Cable. I loved that. Clark Cable, I think his name was. A voice therapist. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Clark Cable is so dumb. You call that a stupid joke? <laughs> uh, Sorry, go ahead. A voice therapist, says Rob, needs to take notes as I do voice exercises. Oh, he's working with a voice exercise. He's going, Mommy made me match my M&Ms. Mm, good. My vocal cords are damaged. I'm sorry, Rob. The keystrokes are loud. My focus is distracted. I told the voice therapist there are keyboards that have quiet key clicks. The voice therapist says, What? I want to know what brand to buy. He loved the idea, but I couldn't find info on the internet that was reliable. What keyboard would you recommend? A mushy keyboard. So uh, this is actually, you know, get us going on keyboards. You're never going to get us to stop. You and John, I don't care. What we love our we keyboards. Yeah. So uh, this is a big question. Most modern keyboards are quiet, by the way, I should point out. So your therapist is using some <laughs> some old keyboard that he probably really likes, but is a clicky keyboard. The original IBM uh, OmniKey, Northgate OmniKey keyboards had what we called buckling springs. John C. Dvorak used to sing the praises of a buckling spring keyboard. You can't get really buckling springs anymore. Where'd you put? Oh, you're there. You can't really get buckling springs anymore. But the good news is there are lots of companies out there that would make switches mm -hmm. that are different, have different characteristics. Key travel is one of them. Uh, the bounce of the key is another one. And the audible click is another. The buckling keys were very loud. And you remember, in fact, you probably still hear it when you're on the line with, uh, you know, air, airline reservationists or you're at the desk there. And it's because those are buckling keys. Those are old terminals that have big buckling key keyboards. I like them. They're good for carpal tunnel because you're really working. Uh, it's not smaller. Apparently, smaller movements are worse for you. So you're moving your hands more and you're working a little harder. Uh, so there's a couple of things uh, to say about that. 
uh, honestly, most laptops are pretty quiet. Yeah. Uh, if you're there, if you can hear it, um, I, I'm, I don't know if you're on a call or not. If the therapist microphone is in the laptop, <laughs> then you will hear it. You will absolutely hear it. We have this problem sometimes occasionally with uh, some of our guests on our shows where they are not using a standalone mic. You notice we always try to use a standalone mic. They're using their laptop mic and you, and you, you hear banging on it. Remember how Stacy, you could hear her bang like crazy <laughs> on the twig because she was a loud typist. So maybe your therapist is a loud typist, or maybe you're on a Zoom call. And yep. Your therapist is not using a separate mic. Yeah. And another thing along with that is even if there is a separate mic being used, if it's on the same desk or table as that keyboard and they are a, a hard typer, then that will also oh, yeah, they'll you go right through it. Telephoning. Telegraphing. Telegraphing. That's yeah. Right. So, um, but we have, they've provided me with some fun keyboards. This is the keyboard I personally like, which is not a quiet keyboard, but this is the Keychron. Uh, you can spend, this is, I think, a $300 keyboard, which is crazy because you could buy $5 keyboards. And the $5 keyboards are quiet, by the way. <laughs> but this, this one of the reasons I like Keychron, first of all, this thing weighs five It's very heavy. Pounds. You it's could heavy. do some workouts with it. Uh, it also has some features that I uh, prefer. It's a wireless, but it can uh, pair to multiple Bluetooth keep computers so it can easily switch computers with it. Um, but the other thing is you can choose the keys. And now Keychron has its own keycaps that they use. There are a variety of companies that make different keycaps. This is a, this I love is a that tester. Thing. I love it. This is so great. Is this yours, John? Yeah. This is a tester for a company called Cherry. Uh, keyboard, and by the way, go to Reddit, r slash r slash keyboard. And you'll, and you'll, <laughs> you'll find your people. Mechanical keyboards. Mechanical keyboards, even better. You'll find nut jobs. Right? <laughs> you'll find people who really take this stuff seriously. I'm a little, I'm a dabbler. So this is, what this is, Cherry sends this out. This is a sampler of their different, they have different switches. It's like a chocolate sampler. It's a sampler. So they have speed silver, black, silent black, red, silent red, tactile gray, brown, silver, other, no, no, clear, green, blue, and white. So you can try them. I'll try it. Let's see the silent one. See how silent that is. That's silent. You want to hear a clicky one? Here's a... Hear how loud that is? Yep. Oh, that's a good one. What is that? That's the cherry green. See, I like that. But it's not good on the radio or TV or for a sound, a voice therapist. So maybe try the cherry... Silent black. And I'm thinking too, this is the unique thing about a voice therapist. When I was working with Joanna, um, Scott who, Wilkinson's Scott wife, wife who does uh, voice therapy, specifically, we had to turn off all of the noise cancellation features of Zoom as we were talking. So she could hear you. So she could hear me. And so that the little sounds that I was making that Clicking. normally Zoom would make go away, yeah. she could hear. And so, yeah, you have to have that stuff turned off so you can hear those little, they can hear those little sounds that your throat might be making, your vocal cords might be making. So, yeah, you would Listen have Listen to this. This is Ooh. a cherry blue. So that was I like cherry. That. This is really loud. So here's cherry clear. Here's cherry green. Here's cherry blue. It's even louder. And here's cherry white. I used to use cherry brown and cherry red. Here's cherry red. I think I ended up choosing cherry, cherry green. Brown. If I was going to get one, I'd get the cherry yeah, green. I, I like, like the it. blue now. Wow. Ooh. That is clicky. That is they, clicky. they maybe have like a little, a little clicker in there <laughs> <laughs> to make that sound. There's a tiny little cricket. So that, that just gives you an idea. I mean, here's, you know, 12 different keys with 12 different sounds. And that's just a fraction of what's out there. Cherry's not the only switch maker. Uh, so you could tell them the cheapest, the key, the cheaper the keyboard the less the travel and the softer it will be. Those are mushy. They're plastic domes. They don't make any sound. So she could go out and just get a cheap keyboard. Mm -hmm. But I think if you hear it, either her microphone's right next to it. Because look, here, I'll make get that clicky keyboard, the clicky key, the cherry blue, right next to the microphone. Now I'll do it down in my lap. You can barely hear it, right? So either her microphone is pointing at her lap or I'm guessing almost certainly she's on a Zoom call on a laptop yep. using the mic on the laptop. And that means when she types, it is like thunder. You know what, Leo? What? You need to get you one of these. <laughs> Whoa. That's 70 bucks. That's 72 different 
cherry keys. Wow. Not I just, just cherry. It's a variety it's of different switches. <gasps> oh. And if you go to r slash mechanical keyboard, you'll see there are new companies that make switches that people prefer to cherry. Cherry was a hot thing five years ago. Not anymore. Uh, I love these key coins. And they make that. their own. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? I don't even I'll care send about you the link, Micah. Yeah, because I'm going to for that for Christmas. <laughs> I think Keycrine will send you the little one for free, won't they, John? No, you have to buy them. You have to buy them. Well, there you go. Uh, you don't You don't need to worry about that. Tell her to stop using her laptop microphone. Yeah, Get her a $30 headset mic that won't pick up the key strokes. That's probably the real solution. Agreed. Good question. All right, we have time for one more. Let's do one quick more quick email for Dick. Oh, yeah. Dick will join us in about six minutes. I closed the email box. Oh, oh wow. I thought we were done. I'm picking from the top. It's a long stack. We really got to do more emails. This is crazy. I did quite a few while you were out. Did you? Good yeah. man. Uh, all right. This comes from Cherry. <laughs> oh, wow. She's the, that's the woman they named Cherry. the keycaps after. Uh, Cherry from Oceanside. Hi, Cherry. Hi, Cherry. I used to live in Oceanside. California? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know you lived As in a California kid. before. Yeah. Before way long Missouri. time ago, I was five and six years old. You don't really remember in Missouri? No, I remember it quite well. Oh, that's why I didn't ever want to live in California because I thought it was going to be like Oceanside, where it was hot all the time. Oh, anyway. do you remember Cherry? I don't remember. Cherry. Okay, <laughs> she remembers you. Oh, she, she says hi, Micah. No, she says what's the best thing? She put it in quotes to buy, so I could do it myself. Do what yourself? Convert. Oh, it was in the subject. Convert oh. old home movies to digital. Oh, I have hours of tapes slash movies to convert. Well, that's two different problems. One's tapes, VHS tapes, and one is if you say movies, I'm thinking Super Eight or high, you know the the f film. What do you think, Mikey? So if you, in, she's your friend. If you, you know her. No, if you insist on doing it yourself, um, Elgato is probably the company that I would use. Elgato makes a video capture device. Uh, it is. It has the standard, um, what is it, coaxial options, as well as an S-video uh, cable, if you can believe it. And then it just plugs in USB into your computer. And then you play it back on your VHS into the video capture device from Elgato. It's available for uh, just under $90 on Amazon. Um, it's just called Elgato Video Capture. I, I'm i curious how you feel, Leo, about doing it yourself versus just using one of the services that's out there. So if you don't have a, if you have a, either a lot of time or not a lot of movies to convert, you could do it yourself. But it takes time. It takes the same amount of time as those movies are. Very few things will do it faster than the actual length of the movie. So if you have a thousand hours of movies to convert, it's going to take you at least a thousand hours and some expense just to digitize them. And then you might want to edit them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So honestly, what I would do is get a box together and send it to Scan Cafe or one of the many different companies that will just take your old movies. One of the advantages of doing that is if you have a variety of formats. So if some of your movies are on high eight video some of them are on vhs some of them are on film you put it all in the box and they have their job is to have all the different ways of playing that back and digitize it so yeah it depends whether you have more time or more money it costs you money to do it but it saves you time uh, to have them do it but it, doing it yourself takes time now i was just checking on amazon because for a long time about 10 years ago they were selling vhs players that would take a tape on one side and they burnable dvd oh, in the nice. other just do it and you'd press play and it would just do it and yeah they're all now renewed or uh, you know i don't think anybody's selling them new and they're expensive they're about 300 bucks here's a magnavox a sony uh, a samsung wow that's 500 bucks so the whole idea of these is you know they they're dvd burners slash players but they're kind of they're it's kind of an old Technology. I, I knew when they came out with these 10 years ago, this is a interim thing because eventually everybody who has a VHS tape is going to is going to burn it up. So see that side has a VHS player. I mean, if you needed a VHS tape player, be yeah. good to, and then that side has a DVD player. So we'll do both duty, but it will also uh, record. I believe it will record. And that's the 
uh, yeah, this does the uh, recording, which is kind of nice. That's why they made this. Um, and now for the video, that that work if it's a VHS tape. But if it's a high eight, now you get to get a camera that'll record high eight and play it back from the camera into the computer using the Elgato. And then if it's film, then you got to get a, a, a projector, a Super 8 or 8 millimeter projector and project it on a screen and then use your camera to capture the video on the screen. They even make little boxes that are basically it's the same thing. You put a camera watching the screen backwards. You have a, a machine, a, you know, film player playing into the it's a it's a crazy it's rube a goldberg thing <laughs> and you're gonna buy these things and you're gonna use them once and that's that send it to scan cafe or somebody like them uh they'll take good care of it uh since you're in oceanside the la area has a lot of companies that will do this locally and that's good because then you don't have to mail your tapes you could just carry it in to them and honestly that's going to be the best way to do it you don't want to do this yourself. i agree but if you're retired you got nothing but time. I got nothing but time. Then you <laughs> you're can gonna do it need, for your family, you're, too. You're going to need to, basically, conceptually, you'll need three things. You'll need a thing to play it back, mm -hmm. a thing to convert the thing that's being played back, which is analog, into bits and bytes, and then you'll need a, th a computer that's connected to that converter to record, and now you'll have it on the hard drive. So analog player for whatever medium you have, digitizer that converts the bit the the analog signals into bits hooked up to a computer for editing and recording um that's conceptually what you need the problem is you, there's all these different analog type players depending on what your medium exactly is. yeah uh lots of fun yeah have, and have fun cherry <laughs> <laughs> you should do it you know i have a box in my office of old vhs tapes old dvds Old little high eight. Do you remember those little high eight video oh, cameras? Oh, so cute. Got a lot of that stuff. And I know my kids are on there. And the question is, how much do I want videos of my kids? You oh, you do a lot. That's how much. I guess. I have a few of when they were really little that I took on a, a early digital camera. I've had a few. <laughs> but All right. I'll few. send it in. All right. <laughs> All right. Some of them are like the old TV shows I did, you know, on the uh, screensavers and call for help. Abby and Henry, when they were little, like eight or nine or, or younger, even they Henry do. was born in 94. So he would have been four. Abby was born in 92. So she would have been six came in and they did a review of some silly thing. Oh, so that's it would, adorable. It would be cute to have. All right, I'll do it. Yeah, because I tell you what, there's one VHS tape that we would always play um, of me interacting with my grandpa and all this. And over time, that VHS has lost its magnetism. Oh, yeah, a lot. digitize it. Yeah. yeah. We had, uh, uh, Jennifer had a uh, recording of her grandmother. Every Thanksgiving, she would tell this story about a turkey. It was a cute little kind of poem story. And she had it on cassette tape. And that's the kind of thing you want to get digitized because mm -hmm. then it, then you can make infinite copies and yep. it'll last forever. That those tapes will not. The analog stuff will not. Is that you? Yeah, that's, that's the cool. uh, old Call for Help show they're showing in. Uh, Scooter like X GIF. found a uh, GIF of the Call for Help show uh, on uh, Tech TV. Yeah, that was me doing what I'm doing right now. Nothing has changed 25 years horn. later. I'm on the horn. Uh, I probably could play that theme song if I could find it. Because uh, I don't think anybody claims the rights to that anymore, do they? We will be back after Leo finds his theme song. <laughs> Let's take a break. And then it's Dickie D, the giz, fizz, whiz, whatever he is. Ooh, this all rhymed. <laughs> oh, it's on Internet Archive. You ready? I'm ready. Call for help show on TV. Is this it? You have to download it, I think. Where's the download option? Oh, there it is. Ping torrent zip. Wait, if it's just I a PNG. Think, I think that's yeah. just a picture of Windows for some reason. Oh, somebody found it. Joe found it. Oh, you're so good, Joe. This is actually kind of funny if you if you listen to it. Oh, it's on YouTube. We had a good company do these theme songs. Oh no, this is all. This is not the right one. Oh. This is like later. This I don't like this one at all. Hey, call for help is on. I hated that one. I 
so dopey. <laughs> Made me dance. It was so dopey. That was you scatting at the end. Yeah, sorry. It was not good. Where is it? Call for help theme. Tech TV. There's one with Chris Prillo, but it won't be the same one. Is this it? Ooh, yeah, go ahead. You can play this. Spooky. Here it is. That's it. These people can help me with my computer. Oh. Oh, no. The ignition will be with you in four hours. Four hours. You can upgrade for just $5,000. <laughs> Universal Studio Config Board should be sent to ID6. I need that in plain English. <laughs> help. Leo LaPorte to call for help. May I help you? Is that your voice? Yeah. That didn't sound like And here's the set. Hey, hi. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome. This is it. Call for help. Help. From 19... Wow. I'm oh, sorry, 2001. Because Your voice has aged like fine wine. Computers work. I mean that sincerely in a good way. The stuff the computer industry doesn't want you to well, know. Well, I'm talking you, higher. Kinda, yeah, you like an empowered geek. I, I think it sounds the same. I think it sounds different. You said I'm glad different. you're here. We've got a great show for you. A very special treat for people who well, like is to TV. play music on their computers. Whether I don't they have like a to big download MP3s, make oh, their own MP3s, true. record them to CD. Do you remember those days? Dick D. Bartolo is here. The Giz Wiz. Hello, Dickie D. Welcome. Leo, how you doing? You remember those days. You were on call for help and, and the screensavers. Uh, let's see, was I, I? Well, you were definitely on the screensavers. So, oh, screensavers, I think, is when I started. You're Back bundled in, up. Uh, or is it freezing in uh, Disneyland? Did you forget yeah. to pay the heat? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hey, happy Christmas, Dickie D. Happy well, the same to you guys. We got a very nice... Uh, 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 oh, my mustache. Oh, I love that necklace. Is it lighting up, yeah. too? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, I went by the Rockefeller tree, and I thought, there's so many lights, they're not going to miss a dozen. <laughs> so. yeah, and you're right, they don't. And what is the hat? Uh, the hat is something I'm going to talk oh, about because it. I already sent a bunch of these out as Christmas gifts. So we, we've done a hat with speakers in it. We've done a hat with an LED. Uh, I found the hat with both speakers <laughs> and, and the LED, LED light. And a microphone so you can take <laughs> phone calls. No. <laughs> and a candy and you cane. Can pop, I like the fact that you can pop the LED out. And if you have an emergency, you can use oh it as gosh. a flashlight. Nice. You're basically and a walking LED, toolbox. You slide that off and you charge the LED separately. <laughs> and it's a whistle. just plugging it into a computer <laughs> or... And it is... Inexpensive for some reason, gray. I I bought this one. Gray was thirteen dollars, and navy and black were, I think, sixteen bucks. Wow, this is cool. And I checked on Amazon earlier, and you can get them in a day or two. So, if you want a not quickie, too late for a last minute Christmas no, gift, no, or Hanukkah, uh, so even. you might even Bluetooth. make it before Hanukkah's over. Wow. Oh, yeah, we missed that. Did, wasn't it yesterday? Oh, maybe. Yeah, Blue you're right. Bluetooth 5.2. Yeah. 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 You know, yesterday I was wearing candles and, and I thought, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the menorah hat. This seems dangerous. I think I'm. <laughs> wow, this is really cool. I like this. Yeah, I'm going to go that, buy yeah, a, I thought that, a dozen of them. So how's the sound quality? The sound quality is fine. I mean, you know, if you've been listening to earbuds, you're going to be disappointed. But. It's it's better it's better than the transistor radio. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. No, it's pretty decent for uh, open ear. And then I right? thought I, I I'd find something that Micah would like. Ooh. So I mean, I liked this. This is cool. Oh, this is good. Okay. Well, then I also have the flashing orb. Oh, the LED orb. And I have so much junk on my desk here now. You can't I even can't find, find it, can he? It's there but, somewhere. Uh, Just uh, turn it on. Uh, it, is it it's flashing on my website. I love, so this I love it. You can't find it. <laughs> it. You should see, by the way, if you've ever get a chance to go to Disneyland, you should see it. It's amazing. So is the, 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 <laughs> the name, the the Tick Duck Flying Orb Ball. Well, orb, yes. Well, the, the Bluetooth beanie is the Mox to You. <laughs> 
Bluetooth beans. These, These are random are so names. Great. These are random, random names. Yeah. I don't see so, the orb on Gizwizd up. Uh, I clicked it? on Ask the Tech Guys on the side. Ah. Oh, I'm looking at the front page. That's why. Yeah. And then, I was and the then so this thing, oh, I learned flies. one of the tricks. First of all, every review I read said, amazing if you practice, practice, practice. Oh, that means it's hard. Oh. It doesn't work very well. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. This is have you been practicing? Like found oh, it. That. That's cool. Thank you, Dennis. It's a little guy. Dennis came downstairs and searched through the pile, <laughs> found yeah, it good. Uh, Dennis was practicing with it. Yeah, That's maybe that was, was it. Uh, yes, exactly. But I love, I love, like I said, use it as a boomerang, throw it at a 15 degree angle. Okay. <laughs> well, let me get my protractor. Yes. <laughs> I'm, yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, but the good thing about it is it can crash into things and not break because I think I had it hit pretty much everything at Disney. <laughs> uh, but it, it's great fun. So it's kind of like it's a little, a little drone expensive. Orb. Yes, there it is. Yeah. Thirty two ninety nine on Amazon. Yeah, but you know what? If you go to that Amazon page and scroll all the way to the bottom, it looks like they're all the same photo. And they range anywhere from about $26 up to $36. Oh, that's hysterical. Because it's basically the same company. Uh, right. It probably is. It Everybody went to China. Yeah. and, and uh, Now, I'm going to go to your Gizwiz uh, video, which is on uh, YouTube on the Gizwiz channel. Because I want to see you flying this thing. Are you going to fly oh, okay. it? Is, is it? Is, uh, I did. And there's also a link on, on my website, where you, yeah. on the page you were just there. There's the orb. Let's see. Let's see. All right. There you are. You're pressing the up button. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. That side up. Oh, this would be great for airports. You could really confuse planes. <laughs> oh, dear no, Lord. No, don't do that. It's probably illegal. Yeah. All right. Uh, so throw it, Dick. Uh, like yeah, I know. Scroll in a little more. Are you going to throw it? Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. Here, uh, Let's see. Uh, oh, he threw it and it hit. The motor shuts off more. if it hits something. Yeah, uh, no, this is the one trick I learned Ooh, is start it, start it, then hold it slightly above your palm. Oh, and it's then floating. It'll follow your palm. Your magic. And then suddenly you will lose Whoa. track of it. <laughs> it rolls down the hall and it's just. It, it looks like emergency services have arrived. Yeah, yeah but it automatically shuts itself off if it, if it hits anything. I want to throw it out a actually, window. It's it's great. So fun. there are, in theory, ways to make it do more than just this. Uh, there are theory a lot. You can make it into a boomerang. If you throw it at fifteen, the, the reviews degrees. are great, but all every review says practice. you have to practice a yeah. lot to get it yeah. to do the did things. You, did you that, do your Did you do your practice? Your daily practice. 15 minutes a day. Did you, Dick, did you practice your tick duck today? <laughs> uh, uh, gee, mom. I, I forgot to practice the tick I duck. I forgot to practice. Oh. Well, hey. you have a tick duck solo coming up at school, so you better yes. practice. What's your instrument, little Dicky? Uh, it's a tick duck. I'm flying orb. Uh -huh. Oh, dear. If you go to gizwiz.biz, G-I-Z-W-I-Z dot B-I-Z, that's Dick's website, you will see, of course, the link we're talking about, the Gizwiz visits the tech guys. And you can see those both, the the, the Mox to you Bluetooth beanie and the TikTok <laughs> flying orb. No Mox to you. No Mox to you. <laughs> but if you also go there, you can click a link called What the Heck Is It? And I think you're, are you going to end in December uh, 31st? I think we, yeah, we don't have a lot longer. Like, uh, this one's almost done. Yeah, like two weeks. Well, I mean, this is obvious. This is what they put your kidney in when they're bringing it for transplants. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you wow. have a tiny kidney. <laughs> a really, really tiny, <laughs> tiny kidney. <laughs> It's a uh, it's a transportation device for uh, transplant kidney. organs. Yeah, yeah, dolls play. That's what it is. It's a doll trans. So if you're playing doctor with your dollies, there you go. When you rip <laughs> transplant their hearts, me Barbie. Yeah, transplant me Barbie is big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look what we're playing for. Ooh. This is the uh, February January, February issue of Mad Magazine. You're mad here. Oh, I get it. Get it? <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, good, good, Mike. <laughs> and what is what is Dick's article in here? Because he's got uh, one in every. See, I have two things in there. My favorite is uh, a, a quickie 
Uh, it's toward the end. Consumer, believe it or not. <laughs> and dude, does people are, remember Ripley's Believe It or Not anymore? Well, Is that probably that's, not? Probably not. Probably, that's probably in the chat room. They will. Yes, because they're old farts. I mean, uh, yes. Thing, things that happen you can't believe, and these are consumer, believe it or not. Um, Yale Tubster, a college student, bought a computer to help with his schoolwork. When he got home, he opened the box. And every cable, every connector, and even the manual were in the box. I can't what? believe it. <laughs> believe it or not. You know what? I remember reading this when I was a kid. This has been a, that was an ongoing segment, wasn't it? Yes, I it, love it, it. it was. It was. <gasps> and my other favorite is Mabel Duck went to the supermarket with a bunch of money saving coupons. The supermarket had every item in the exact size, <laughs> and she was able to redeem every coupon. Or Eleanor Pomeranian of Cuthbert City, New Jersey, who bought a cordless phone that provided static-free, crystal-clear reception in every room in her home. Believe it or nuts. Nuts. That is very, very cute. Oh, I. you know what? Dix had a, a a piece in every Mad Magazine for more than fifty years, right? Yeah, like fifty three years, something like that. Wow! I, no one has that. Will be call Guinness because that record is never gonna. <laughs> that's a once. That's and you can be a part of history for year fifty three if you get this Mad Magazine. You could of course buy it for five ninety nine in the newsstands, cheap. Or get no, you it. have to subscribe. You can't even buy it anymore. You have to subscribe. No, no. A Barnes and Noble sells all the specials, but not uh, the. Oh, uh, and there is a Spy versus Spy special coming out, which would be well. Yeah, worth. that'll be a Barnes. That'll Noble. be. I gave once. I gave Henry uh, a Mad Magazine omnibus that I think was like it was maybe a, all of them. It was huge. Maybe they never made that, but I. But it was, and he loved it. He loved that. Was when he was little. He loved it. So go to gizwiz.biz, click the What the Heck Is It contest. How do you win this Mad Magazine? Well, that's the one they're playing. That's a, that is the one they're playing That's the for. one you're playing for. There's 18, and they're autographed, too. Notice uh, you autographed it right there for me, which is nice. Uh, so there's six of them for the right answer, but you're more luck, likely to win if you get the best wrong answer, funny wrong answer. There's 12 of them for that. And that is the February 2024 issue of Mad Magazine. And contest, this one ends on December 31st, but there's always a new one, right? New Year's oh, Day. Absolutely. There'll be a brand we new one. We keep it going. Even though Mad moved to California you, and it's down to one person, I'm still doing it. You have too much stuff in Dick's Gadget Warehouse not to. You can't move it. It's going to live there forever. It's easier to mail it. Don't move it. Mail, Mail it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dickie D. And, so okay, buddy. And don't forget, he does a great show every week with OMG Chad, Chad Johnson, uh, gizwiz.tv, if you want to see the Gizwiz show. Perfect. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Mr. D. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays, guys. What are you doing for Christmas? Anything? Uh, I'm going to play with my hat and my awe, but that's about it. I play with my hat, and oh, this is I what happens. It. it gets very excited. <laughs> wow. You know, you should get a mousetrap, and you can get rid of the little guy. Or something. <laughs> There's something in here. I don't know what it is. Every year, Burke has to change the battery. That's all I know. And by that, he means take the old mouse out and put a new mouse yeah, in. Well, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Okay, bye. Merry take Christmas, care. bud. Take care. Bye-bye. Burger Lives Estate is going to sue us for this, but that's okay. Uh, let's get another uh, caller. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? All right. Uh, let's pick up on Wes. And Wes. Wes. Got his hand up. Wes. Very patient fella. Wes, come on down. Did I not do the right thing? I see Wes. Pressing. Pressing. Maybe my buttons don't work. I turned it red, but I can't. It doesn't seem to send him to the breakout room. Yep. Wes is moving. Wes is on the move. He's on the move. Just like my mouse. Wes. Wes, where are you calling from? Uh, DFW. Oh, nice. Dallas-Fort Worth area. Where the West yeah, begins. 
where the West begins. They call it Fort Worth where the West begins, don't they? Sure. Am I wrong? I just, where the West begins. Where the West begins. Yeah. <laughs> you said you called a week ago? Uh, a few weeks ago, I asked you about a studio display for my wife. Ah, oh, yes. I okay. wasn't here for that. How did it how, Yes, how tell did us it go? more. How did we, yeah, how, are we happy? Are we sad? I'm calling you from it right now. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know what? That's nice. a great picture. It's a good camera. It sounds good. I'm impressed. Where's your wife? It, it was an early Christmas present for her office, so oh, she likes nice. it a lot. Good, good. Oh, oh, I'm yay. so glad to hear that. Yeah, we we talked about, um, you know, you had mentioned that you were thinking about the studio display, uh, but you were, you know, perhaps looking at other options. And basically because she wanted this all-in-one device, right, that had the speakers in it, that had the webcam, that had the microphone to make it as simple as possible, uh, ended up settling on that being the best option, even if many of the tech reviewers out there when the thing first launched kind of panned it as not being you good. know what i think i better buy this for my wife she has at home she has standalone monitors and she i gave her a fancy audience set up so that she plugs a re, you know she has a high lpr 40 and it never works yeah, that's true every time we're trying <laughs> to have it a never call, works it's... and she says this is why i want an imac but this is better than an imac because she yeah. can use her mac studio she's all right i'm gonna order one right now is it too late for christmas she's been she's been bugging me for this. so wes you recommend it uh she does so <laughs> if the wife she is does a happy, lot of designs on her ipad and she actually likes that she's able to zoom in and see it blown yeah. up on a much larger screen nice. and yeah. also you know colors are accurate and everything's yeah, that was the other reason. Uh, thank you for the reminder. That was the other reason we decided to go with that is because we knew that the color matching between an iPad and this studio display would be the same and that there wouldn't be a bunch of extra work whenever you were trying to share between the two devices. Um, I'm really glad to hear that. Now, it looks like I at least see a printer back there and then what might be what a photo printer or some sort of vinyl cutter. I'm kind of curious. Is your wife a crafter? Oh, it's a Cree cut. She has an Etsy store. Ah. Oh. And she uses a telescope to look for. <laughs> that is a cool telescope. No, it's more just for family. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's she selling her Etsy store? Uh, she has a design she does. Uh, it's called Nerdy Science Stuff. <gasps> I'm going. Wait right a now. minute. Now Nerdy we need to know. Stuff. We need to know more. You just said the right words. Nerdy Science Stuff. Is, is the that name the name of the, of the store? store? Correct. Nice. All right, let's see. I need to find a store called Nerdy Science Stuff. Let's we're see. still working on it. it. We're trying to attack all the different uh, STEM fields. Aren't you nice? Sweet. Is she, are, are you a scientist? Or is she a scientist? She's a laboratory scientist and oh. microbiologist. Nice. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there it is. Dallas, Texas. So Gifts she's for science nerds. Oh, wow. How cool. Oh, mugs and, and uh, teas and... She hand draws all the designs. That's so cool. Oh, socks. Now you're now you're talking. <laughs> is it nerdy science stuff? Is that the name of the Etsy? If you go to Etsy.com slash shop slash nerdy science stuff, all one word, you'll okay. be able to find it. I have markets. I'm gonna change that for shop. Because I think that's a search otherwise. No. Uh I did post it in the Discord if you just want to click the link there. Um, no, I'm going to do it myself because I am. You do it. I'm a do it yourself. You're, you're a go getter. I'm a go getter. Pharmacology, microbiology. Ooh, hearts. Oh, the mugs are so cool. Oh, and I like the onesie that says immune system. <laughs> that is great. Hey, well, Wes, that's wonderful. Uh, and uh, congratulations on having a nerdy science wife. Yeah, so cool. That's really neat. Yeah. And thank you for thank following you. up. Um, I also want to say, uh, Scott Wilkinson mentioned last week that uh, he wished there was a place he could find all the different shows and where to view them. Yeah. There is an app called Just Watch, if you guys aren't aware of it. Yeah, we uh, someone actually ended up calling in to suggest that uh, that day. And we found Just Watch and we found another one. I can't remember what the other app was at this point. But we settled on Just Watch because it also has that Apple TV app that has all the links in it. Um, so yeah, for, for anyone who might have missed that, Just Watch is a great app that lets you basically type in the title of a show, a movie, whatever it happens to be, and it'll display the different places where you can watch that content. And so that could be, you know, via Amazon Prime or 
on Netflix or wherever it happens to be. It, it shows you all the different ways. We were you talking can watch about it, it on um, Mac Break Weekly. Also, Jason Snell had a recommendation. I think yeah. he liked just channels. Watch. I think was well channels. He oh, also that was liked, a different. That thing, was yeah. a different thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I think just watch is very good. Thanks for the recommendation. We'll send that along to Scott too. Um, I had a couple questions. Oh sure. boy, this is a this is a bonus round. Go <laughs> ahead. Yes. Well, you, you guys have mentioned several times about the issues with connecting to public Wi-Fi. Mm. And I was wondering how much of an, I guess I should say, when is it an issue? Is it just merely connecting to it that becomes an issue? Or is yeah. it you're actually in a password to, to log into something? Generally, and you're nowadays, you're pretty safe because of Google's push for HTTPS everywhere. Almost every site you go to is encrypted and secure. And you can tell, you know, because it'll say it's HTTPS and there'll be a pad, closed padlock. So that means that nobody else on the network can see your traffic, which is, you know, going to protect you in that regard. You don't have to worry about passwords as long as you're on a site like that or credit card numbers. And pretty much, you know, all the email sites do that. All the shopping sites do that. All the banks do that. There are very few sites now. Even our site is HTTPS. It doesn't need to be. You're not giving us any information. But at the same time, Google pushes that and they say your search results will be better if you do that. So we do it. So I think that that part of it, you don't have to worry about this. There is a larger risk, though, anytime you're on a network that other people can be on. So that's a coffee shop or a hotel or a cruise ship. It's open Wi-Fi at the airport because you're on the same network as somebody else. If there is a malicious person on the network, too, there are tools they can use. Like there's a thing called the Wi-Fi pineapple to attack you. Uh, one common attack is to find somebody else on the network, use the Wi-Fi pineapple to see what other Wi-Fi access points they have saved and been on. There's a way to find that out. And they will look for one that looks like your house, you know, Wes's house. And then they will impersonate it. Now your laptop is gonna say, hey, we're home. It's going to say, forget the airport Wi-Fi. I'm, we're home. And we'll join this impersonator as your home network. If the, if the bad guy is really smart, he's passing the network through his machine, the internet through his machine to your machine. So you may not even know that. The only way you'd know is if you looked at your Wi-Fi and you said, well, we're not home. Why am I on my own Wi-Fi at home? But once you're on that you know, same Wi-Fi. Now you're really at risk because there's other things they can do. They can watch your traffic. So I think it's a minor risk. It would require a bad actor with a with a hardware tool. Uh, these are widely available, but a hardware tool to do that. Um, you know, that's why a VPN is often the right thing to do. You're protecting yourself if you're using a VPN. Uh, as as with everything. When you're more secure, it's more inconvenient. It slows down your system a little bit. It's more inconvenient. Uh, so it depends on what we call your threat model. What, how, how much of a risk is it for you and how much risk can you tolerate? If you're really worried, use a VPN. That'll solve the problem. Does Apple's private relay help with this? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite as much as a VPN. It's not a VPN. It's yeah. It's it's, it's more about keeping you from being tracked than yeah, it is about completely obscuring what you're but doing. But many, but you know, there are VPNs everywhere. We have a sponsor, uh, which is a very a very good one if you want to pay for a VPN. But there are also VPNs out there uh, in a variety. You know, like your Google phones now have VPNs built in. There's your various VPNs out there that you can use with the hardware that you have. So check that out. And I like ExpressVPN. That's another one that you can yep. use. That's our sponsor. You know, there's an interesting um, question. Okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is in regard to iTunes. Sure. Um, so I, I'm usually pretty far behind on catching up with shows and movies. So I tend to buy them on sale and uh, kind of take my time. Yes. Smart. It's $20 Apple. to rent Taylor Swift's era's movie. I don't want to pay $20 for a rental. I'll wait. I'll wait. So you hear that, you know, they can remove those at any time. And I want That's to true. see uh, downloading them. And storing them, want to see what methods you guys recommend, and if there's any way to link that to an Apple TV for offline viewing. That is an interesting question. So, when it comes to something that you have straight up purchased, I don't know that I've ever run into an issue where I've 
full on purchased something and then had it taken away. It's only with the subscription services where I've been streaming something and then it was taken away. Um, what, you know, in terms of, of the content that I have, uh, a lot of times I actually have it turned off to store those copies locally because it just takes up space that I'm not using, but you might turn that off. So in, um, on your, your Mac, you have the settings in the, in this storage settings to actually say, no, don't automatically delete this TV show or this movie after I've, uh, downloaded it to my device. As far as on the Apple TV, that's a little bit more complicated because the way that the Apple TV works is the highest quality version is not a downloadable version. Uh, you'll notice that if you want to watch a 4K Dolby video, Dol or excuse me, Dolby Atmos version of a show or a movie, there's the option to play it. There's not that little cloud button next to it that you can click to download the whole thing and watch it later. And that is an annoying thing where Apple is trying to make things, uh, the, the experience easier for you by making sure that it's not taking up all of the space on your Apple TV, but also that it is something that you can start watching now if you're wanting to watch it. That's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Leo, I have, I don't know if you've had this experience. I've never had something where if I full on just said, I want this thing and I'm purchasing it, that if the deals changed later, then I no longer had access to it. It's only been with streaming services where that's kind of the agreement going in. You know, we hear stories from time to time about uh, companies pulling stuff. Usually it's books and other things, but it, it happens. I bought a movie I really loved uh, from Apple and I got it home, so to speak. And it was missing a major scene that I remember vividly. Because I guess in the later versions, they decided the scene was, you know, too sexy. Probably Apple decided that. But, uh, yeah, I didn't get the full movie. Wow. So I think this happens. And if you look at the license agreement, you're not buying these movies. You don't own them. So it is something to be aware of. I don't think it happens all that often. I still buy movies. Um, you know, I'm like you too, Wes. I wait for the 99 cent sales or 499 sales. And you can often get great movies cheap. But, um uh, I wouldn't worry about it. The convenience outweighs it. I guess if you really want to make sure you never lose it, buy the uh, DVD physical, or the yeah. UHD Blu-ray disc. And, yeah. And that, then you'll never lose it. That's, that's the, the argument for physical <laughs> is that you do in fact own it at that point. I mean, we live in a world now, I you know, even, even with a UHD player, they could technically revoke the license of the UHD player to play DVDs and, and UHDs. That's true. So we live in a world now where you're all kind of dependent on everybody else and their goodwill. I bought, I just bought my wife a studio display. You saw that. Good for you. <laughs> uh, because that's going to be a holiday gift under the tree, but um, don't tell her. Yeah. Oh, shh. Shouldn't have said that out loud, but Wes, you gave me a good idea. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, I wouldn't well, worry about it. I buy stuff. I buy Kindle books. I buy uh, iTunes TV and movies and, you know, and it's, you know, sometimes you, it does make me worry when I bought the entire office, yeah. for instance, you know, I, that was, uh, I don't know, it was expensive, it was a hundred mm -hmm. bucks or something. And it was every episode of the office, but I knew I would want that, but I don't want it for now. I want it for, for 10 years. Yeah. From now. Whenever I can't find it playing anywhere right. online. Right. I, that's still available to me. Um, although I do find myself just watching it on Peacock, even though well, that's I own the thing, it. you know, I've told the story before about my good movie. friend who taped every episode of, uh, cheers and had it in his closet on VHS tapes. And of course now <laughs> what a waste of time. It's better quality on Netflix. You can watch it for free. Yeah. So, uh, you know, times change. I wouldn't worry about it, Wes. Yeah. If it's something that you absolutely want to make sure you get to see later, you know, maybe you prioritize, you say, okay, this is something that yeah. I need to have and I will have physical versions of it so that I know I, that it never goes away. I do think it's going to happen more often because we're already seeing stuff pulled off of HBO Max, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, or, or taken from Max and put into Netflix. And yeah. these guys are messing around. We're in these very, uh, you know, everything's upside down these days. And uh, because we transition to digital, and I think that the you know, stuff will start to disappear more often, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. and But again, in those cases, it's like I did not 
I paid for HBO Max a subscription service, and that is with the agreement that content is going to change on it versus me seeking out a specific title, buying right. it, and then having Seems it taken like away. That's that's really annoying, but it does happen. Hey, thanks, Wes. Happy holidays to you and the- uh, One last thing. Oh. My kids want to tell you something. Oh, well. Hello, kids. Oh, <laughs> aren't they sweet? What are their names? I'm Elena. Hi, I'm Elena. Aldrich. What's What's your name? Aldrich. Aldrich. Aldrich and Hello. Elena. Hello, both of you. What do you want to say? I want to be awesome. world famous. <laughs> <laughs> Already happened. You are famous now. You're, you're on the show. You're internet famous. <laughs> I'll be at the piano. You're going to play. Also, yeah. Happy holidays. A Merry Christmas, Christmas and Happy Holidays. Happy holidays. Oh, happy holidays thank you, to you guys. You. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Happy Hope holidays. Christmas. Leaves you Where lots of. Where are you? Where are we? Far, far away in Christmas land. <laughs> <laughs> We're in are you serious? No, we're in California. We're in California where it's very warm and there's no snow. Oh, I was about to question if you were in Santa or in the, in the North Pole. Of well, Santa. if 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 I if I weren't, could I do this? Episode two thousand and four. What? It's been Have a great a holiday, kids. We'll Happy be right holidays. back with more of Ask the Tech no. Guys. Bye. Just a little bit. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really that sweet. That was amazing. That's really God, amazing. God, 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 I like God, how it jiggles at you. Christmas this year. Oh, it's lighting up too. I didn't even notice that. Boy, that hat gives is the gift that keeps on giving. I've had that for a year. You know, I was reading on Reddit, there was an interesting story. We were talking about hacking on the open networks. It was an interesting story on Reddit. He says, I was at a Christmas party the other day. And three quarters of the people's iPhones crashed. What could possibly be going on? Uh, and uh, it's an interesting story. There is, was a hack that you could do. Remember I had the Flipper Zero? Mm -hmm. In fact, I gave it to Father Robert, which was probably a mistake. I should have said, was there a priest there? But uh, the Flipper Zero had an exploit that you could crash iPhones using Bluetooth. Oh. Apple has patched it in 17.2. Oh. But... Somebody but did it. At this somebody <gasps> did it at this Christmas party. Somebody had in their pocket one of these little hacking devices. And that's the thing. These devices are cheap. They're not illegal because they're used, you know, for testing purposes. Um, so Apple, with its release of uh, iOS 17.2, made that impossible. Wow. But that party. And see, that's the other thing that we have to be mindful of is that these devices that we have are a lot chattier than you might think at first, you know, at first glance or. Oh, they're first const constantly they're talking. They're talking all the time yeah. to other things. And sometimes another thing shouts at them and makes them scared and then they <laughs> die. Ah, ah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a Bluetooth exploit. And in fact. I think Father Robert actually put it into the Flipper Zero because he said, I'm going to bring you back your Flipper Zero with some extra new features. Ooh. And this was an extra new feature. It can be modified with third-party firmware. There was a particular firmware called Extreme that did a Bluetooth low-energy spam attack that brought within 50 meters, that's 164 feet, you can use a Flipper Zero, this little device, to crash wow. iPhones. And so I think it, that must have happened at that party. It spams it with Bluetooth yeah. and causes it to... Oh, wow. Yeah. Apple's fixed it. Good news. This is one, one reason why you always want to do your updates. All right. Uh, it is half past the hour, roughly. Mm -hmm. Coming up in 20 minutes. I did a do a break. In 20 minutes, we're going to uh, talk with Chris Marquardt. Yes, we are. His, uh, his uh, assignment update, review and update. Meanwhile, let's you can call us 888-724-2884 or zoom us call.twit.tv. You know, I feel like I feel so guilty about this stack of emails. There are quite a few emails. I feel emails. like we should work our way through a few of them here. What let's do you do say? it. Let's do it. All right. These are all carefully vetted by our crack team. <laughs> the boy wonder himself. L Ooh, Leica. Leica writes. I wonder if Lake is an LA from LA. It should be an LA Lake. An LA. <laughs> I have been using Fast Mail, our sponsor, for six months now. I just can't seem to get the program. 
that's a problem right there. To open in mail, it only opens in the migration section. And if I click on the back to mail tab, uh, how or what do I have to do to get fast mail to open in the mail section where I can check my inbox? Thanks for all the help you both provide. I've been a fan of Leo since 2005. Give up, keep up the good work. I almost thought it said give up the good work because <laughs> he's, or Leica's like miffed that we recommended fast mail. So this is, this is the problem with, I, f I feel like this is the problem with Gmail and others. They're so easy to use. You just go to a website. You don't have to configure it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything to it. It just works out of the box. And it's one of the reasons people use free email. If you're going to use a non-free email server, you have to configure, oh, that awful word, your email uh, in your email client. Now, it looks like Lika's using Apple Mail because they said mail. But um, if you want, you can just do fastmail.com, log in, and use their webmail interface. It will be just like Gmail. So there's your inbox right there. If you do want to keep using Apple Mail, you have to now go into the settings for Apple Mail and configure it. What I'm going to suggest you do is go to FastMail's help pages. They have a very good uh, page on setting up Apple email or whatever mail program you're doing. They actually have a, have a page for almost, you know, for Outlook and for everyone. But uh, if you go to FastMail.help, here's the page, automatic setup on a Mac. Uh, they'll also have it for iOS devices. Uh, they'll have it for Outlook and so forth. So you're going to need to go there and you're going to need to follow their setup guide and reconfigure your email to use to work now with the server at FastMail. So you're going to a server to download your email. Now, it sounds like you also want to keep your other email account working and there are a couple of ways to do that you can set it up to automatic if it's gmail for instance gmail will automatically forward to another address every time something comes into your gmail you can have it be sent to your fast mail address fast mail can go out and get your email from gmail you can actually connect it to gmail that's what i do and it'll automatically download all your gmail so that's an additional setup but again fastmail.help has a lot of pages. They've done a really good job. And you can, and they also have support. And this is one of the real advantages of fast mail. You don't have to suffer for six months. There's actual people at the other end of the support. So they will help you get it working. I hope you do. Uh, but this is, a, you know, it's a little confusion over how email works. It's It requires that you connect to that fast mail server. It's a new server for your, your client. Well done. Mm -hmm. Automated setup on the Mac. Another one. Can I do another one? Let's do another one. 2FA Apps asks Kent. Hi, Leo and Micah. Hi, Micah and Leo. Which free two-factor authentication app do, you, app do you recommend? I'd like to use one that has the most push ability. Oh, he wants to use that tap or click on allow instead of typing a code. That's called single sign-on or SSO. I'm aware of Google Authenticator, Duo Mobile, Authy, and LastPass. Uh, and I use LastPass as my password manager. Yeah, it does make sense, Kent. He says, I hope this makes sense. So uh, generally, authenticators work by providing you a six-digit code that is your second factor besides your password. It's a second, almost second password that you need to get into a system. We recommend turning on two-factor everywhere you can, certainly with the important accounts like your bank, uh, your email, your uh, credit cards, things like that. Now, two-factor sometimes just comes in as a text message. Banks often do that because they don't have to explain how to set up a two-factor app for their customers, and they don't want to spend any extra money on support that <laughs> they don't have to. So that's not the most reliable way to do it. I'll tell you which two-factor uh, app I use, but it's sep this is a separate thing from single sign-on. Right. So if, you know, it depends on what you're doing single sign-on with. Microsoft's free authenticator does the two-factor, the six-digit thing, but will also do single sign-on with Microsoft products, which I find really great. You don't need a password for Microsoft uh, products. But that's a but that's a it's kind of a separate thing from two-factor. My favorite two-factor app is 2FAS. 2FAS, and of course, I guess it doesn't like it that I'm wearing a uh, Santa Holly hat. Holly Jolly hat. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to log in with the pin. So, and you can see this, by the way. One of the, let me explain how this works. It's TOTP, time, one time, time based one time passwords. Every 30 seconds, these, sec, these six digit codes update. Every 30 seconds, you see there's a timer on the right there that says how many seconds until the update. That's because these num these these six digit numbers come from a mishup, mashup, mushmash of the time of day and a secret number that you get. That's what that QR code is when you sign up for two factor is a secret long secret number that the uh, the company whatever it is gives you. Uh, and so when they do that mashup, they know the long number. They know what time of day it is. They know what that six digit code should be you know roughly because clocks differ so i can show you these because uh you know they're going to change every 30 seconds it's not going to give you any help 2fas is free the reason i like it kind of like authy um is it will uh you can use it on multiple devices and, and get when you get a new device you don't have to go through the whole process again be, but instead of saving it as authy does on their servers you can upload to iCloud or Google Drive nice. an encrypted blob of your secrets. That's the thing that needs to be preserved. So it's very easy, as you might know, I'm always trying new phones, so it's very easy for me to move from phone to phone. So that was important to me. I also like how it presents itself. I think it, it looks good. Um, I, I used to use the Authy, and I've changed from it. But that, And I think it supports single sign-on. Um, but that's going to depend on... Authy, for instance, supports it with because it's made by Twilio with companies that use Twilio authentication. Microsoft supports it with Microsoft products. Yeah, oftentimes the services that do it, Adobe, for example, you have to use it with the Adobe app itself. So there'll be an app that has two-factor, but also lets you do it. Yeah, yeah. Okta. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Duo, he already knows about Duo. Steam That's another one. is another one that has yeah. its own. Yeah. So Duo is a good example, it, it, but it has to be, a company has to use Duo for its single sign-on. And then you won't need to do the six-digit two-factor. That's the fallback. But uh, something like 2FAS is really designed for two-factor, not single sign-on. So there you go. You might end up having several apps on there, frankly, if you want to do single sign. Uh, pass keys support. Yep. And uh, by the way, everybody now is starting to support that, not only your phone, uh, but uh, uh, I noticed that uh, both our sponsor, Bitwarden, and uh, one password now supporting pass keys, which is great. And that may end up being the future of uh, passwords. I like two factor. Me too. I, I, I want two factor and you want, you want two factor. Trust you me. You do. All right. I think that's enough email. Let's take a call. Another break. You're just full of them today. We'll be right back with a call right after this. I've done, I've done three now. I know I have one more to do, but we, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to do it right before Chris, but I guess, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Uh, who do we take, Mr. See, Boy Wonder? Uh, Jeremy? You're not going to let me live that down. Uh, no, let's do Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie, a phone call. I see Bonnie. Yeah. And I see Jeremy, and I see Joey, and I see Henry, and I see Jeffrey, <laughs> and I see Sounds James, like a book. And I see Neil. Book. Did you ever do Romper Room when you were a kid? No, that's why you don't know what I'm doing. Hello, Bonnie. Star six, Bonnie. Press star six to unmute. Oh. Oh. You hear me? Hello. I hear you. We keep calling you Bonnie, but ah. you're, you're not Bonnie. You're using Bonnie's yeah, phone. I'm, That's your caller ID. No, I'm using my phone, but yeah, good enough. Is my your name, name Bonnie? Paul. Paul? Well, your caller ID shows up as Bonnie. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Where are you calling from? Hi. I'm calling from San Diego, California. Lovely. What can we do for you? Um, I'm using an S10. Okay. And a Samsung S10 phone. And the battery is dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's pretty so old. I am, yeah. So I'm looking for a replacement. Do you like to mention Bonnie? Bonnie and, and all our family uses iPhones. Aha. Uh -huh. But I have a coin Aha. Uh -huh. so I go with another Android. Oh. And if so, which one? <laughs> I don't like the S10 experience um, with that little button on the side and it's always throwing stuff on the screen that I don't like. 
not think of either a, a, a play Android experience or maybe moving to the iPhone. Well, I mean, but, I agree. If you're going to get a uh, Android phone, you should get a Pixel. Agreed. And I think the 6A and the 7A, uh, actually 7A is not out yet. So it's this, this is the 7. Uh, the 7A will come out mid-year. Uh, are excellent phones, and it, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get the seven Mac Pro uh, because it's you know that's like eleven hundred bucks. But I would absolutely uh, not hesitate recommending uh, getting a Pixel Six A. It'll be about three or four hundred bucks, a lot less than an iPhone. So that's a pure Android experience. And yes, I think I mean I like Samsung phones. I have the S twenty three. I mean. But you know, if you don't, you you know what the uh, uh, Samsung experience is like, and it, it is it is Samsunged up. Uh, the Pixel phone is pure pure Google, and I and I really like it. Um, I do think that there is an advantage to going all iPhone in mm -hmm. your family, as much as uh, as uh, you know, Google would like not like me to say that. Uh, we've been playing with this beeper program that lets you uh, get uh, Apple Blue Bubble messages out. And it's just not reliable. I was sending you a message. Half of your responses were coming through. Half weren't. Uh, it hasn't updated with responses from my wife since Thursday. So it's not, it's beeper, this beeper mini thing. Don't, it's not a good solution. It's not an alternative. At some point, uh, I hope this year in 2024, Apple will uh, adopt RCS, the rich communication services, which will make it work fine with, uh, you know, Android phones. But if your whole family is Apple, one of the reasons you might pick Apple is because you can ask Bonnie and others questions. You could say, well, what, I don't know what's going on here. It's going to be a very different experience at first, right? Have mm -hmm. you talked to a lot of people who've moved from Android to to iPhone, yeah, uh, that it's a common thing that I that I hear and yeah. have questions about, and yeah. you know, yes, it's going to take a minute to to get locked in and to understand everything, but uh, it's been my experience that everyone who's not if you're if you're super techy and you are just absolutely driven by all the customization that you can do on Android then it's not as easy to make that shift but if you're not if you just are looking for a good phone that works reliably and is okay to be used then in that case you I, I it's been my experience that it's been their experience that it's an easy shift from Android to iOS yeah I mean it is a bigger <laughs> shift than say from Mac to Windows it's a it's a lot different the yeah. way Android and iOS work, but you get used to it pretty quick. Yeah, I think so. But does it play well with Windows? Uh, what do you need? What do you do with your Android phone now that you would want to be able to do with your iPhone? I I download and upload files to the phone directly. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh, so no. <laughs> so I somebody actually called in about this. Um, Windows has this phone link stuff. Yeah, that works with iPhones, sort of. And I've used it with I can use it with the iPhone if I can use it right now with the iPhone. But it works better with it works best with a Samsung phone. So the experience you're having with are you using phone link. No. Oh, I just use. Uh, you plug it in with a cable. Just, just plug it in with a cable. OK. Uh -huh. Yeah, that will not work with yeah, an no, iPhone. You'll have work. to use uh, Apple's software to do that. Uh, if that's something important to you, then I would get, and by the way, I am one off. This is a Pixel 8. I'm living in the past. It's the 7A that I would recommend. That's and right. I think they do still sell the 6A. But uh, those, yeah, you know what? If you really like Android, stick with that and get a Google phone. The other reason to get a Google phone over the dominant platform, which is Samsung, is that Google updates, the security updates faster. They do feature drops that they don't do anywhere else. Uh, I think you just get a better experience with the Pixel phones. And frankly, they finally started to make pretty decent hardware. They went through a bad period, but I think starting with the 7A, you'd be fine. So, um, and it's also going to cost a, like a lot less, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If you don't mind being a green right. bubble. <laughs> yeah, right. So now when someone sends the Someone says they sent me something. I just go over to Bonnie's phone. There you go. Just go over to Bonnie's phone. Okay. <laughs> Are you on Bonnie's phone right now? Well, no, I don't understand that. <laughs> sure, I know why you. Bonnie? I know why it says Bonnie's name. Bonnie pays the phone bill. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Yeah. So the phone company is identifying you as Bonnie. That's just your caller ID. Uh, let me just look. I'm wow. on the I'm on the uh, Pixel Store. They do sell the 7A. The 6A is still available. That's two years old, uh, but it's still a decent phone. And how much are they going to charge me for that? Let's get let's get it in. Oh, wait a minute. You would want it in green, wouldn't you? <laughs> you like it in green. Michael likes it, everything in green. Green is and uh, three hundred fifty bucks. If you get through AT and T, that's a pretty good price for a very nice phone. Okay. So uh, you know, you know, Android. You love Android. You do things with Windows that you can't really do easily with the iPhone. The iPhone and Windows don't get along quite as well. Um, there is this on Windows. Uh, I think it's called. It's on Windows 10 as well. It's called Phone Link. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, I have to connect it to my phone. There's an open source app that I recommend to everyone. I've talked about it before and uh, we had someone call in and ask about it. It's called Landrop, L A N Drop dot app is the website, Landrop dot app. And I have used this reliably with no issue between my blue suede Windows machine and my iPhone. Uh, it works across all different devices, iOS, Android, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Um, and basically, as long as you are on the same Wi-Fi network with one device and another, you can do what look what behaves like AirDrop. Uh, so you can take a file, drop it into this place, and then it shows up on the other device. It's called LAN Drop. So if you end up deciding, oh, I guess I want to become a blue bubble, then LAN Drop works for you. It's an app you can get in the App Store and uh, you download it to your Windows PC and then you just put stuff onto LAN Drop and it moves it right over to the iPhone, no problem. Can you delete files on the iPhone? Yes, absolutely. I'm pairing uh, um, this um, Google phone to my Windows. Oh, you mean, so a, f a file that you put on your iPhone, you want to be able to delete it using your Windows machine? No, you would just need to delete it on your iPhone itself. Yeah, you kind of, uh, with yeah, the iPhone, sounds like you what should you stop want thinking is... about using Windows at all. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Android is probably the right place for you to be if you're doing this thing where if you're this using, is important to you. if you're using yeah. your phone as a flash drive, which is what you're doing, then you probably don't yeah. want to use an iPhone. Okay, thank you. I'm, I have all these phones. I am now authenticating with Microsoft on my iPhone. Let's see. Uh... And the number is 30. The number is 30 because I'm setting up this <laughs> Windows machine with the allow link to Windows to send and view SMSs, allow it to contacts, allow all photos. It just works so much better with an Android phone. You could do so much more. It's very limited with an iPhone when you when you pair up with it. Yep. But if you do use Windows with your Android phone or your iPhone, take a look at phone link because that is a new feature that Apple has added that makes, I think makes a big difference uh, in, in usability. Cause now for instance, I could be on my laptop, my windows laptop and see messages uh, and respond to them and so forth. So I think it's a, it's a nice feature. Select a task to start exploring. No, I'm going to skip that. Uh, and I'm going to skip for now. Uh, okay. So now I see, my iPhone and my Android phone, and I'm going to, but the Android phone really uh, works a lot better. It does a lot of things. It's kind of cool, really. Yeah, uh, it is. It's you a can good message with it as yeah. if it's yeah, it's a desktop itself. interface to your phone. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. One more call, and then we're going to get uh, Mr. Chris Marquardt, our photo guy, on the hair. <laughs> on the hair? On the hair. On the hair. You're on the hair. Oh, I get it. I all looked right. like I don't have any, but I, I do. I was horn, but. I just am mispronounced. going to pick up another <laughs> phone caller, Neil Dutz. We'll see. If that's Neil that. Diamond? Neil Diamond is on the line. Let's pick Neil up and say hello. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hello, hey, Neil. Neil. How you been? I'm oh, good. How are I, you, how Neil? Hi, we're doing well. Thank you. Okay. I'm out here in Arizona. We, we've talked before. Nice. And I'm kind of calling in to report back. I finally got a chance to try out the um, um, self-driving car. Oh, oh, that's right. You're in one of the places where you have access to Waymo. One of those, yeah, Waymo uh, taxis. Not Cruise, because Cruise is basically given up. But Waymo, nice. Right. How do you like Waymo? Waymo, uh, it, 
interesting experience. I'm not sure you ever tried it yourself. I have um, not. I'm too scared to. Your, uh, uh, we do in San Francisco. Well, I finally tell my, my, yeah, I had my birthday, and so I thought, all right, I had to go, and I, and I, um, said, I'm going I'm to try it out, and it was an interesting experience. Um, they have really nice cars. They have electric Jaguars, looks like. Yeah, that's um, right. The iPads. Yeah. Yep. So they're very nice car. It's kind of interesting because they don't pick you up. You know, if I call a, I don't, I don't drive. I haven't driven in about 30 years, but more to the point, uh, when I have a Lyft or a Uber, like it comes right up to my, uh, right in front of my uh, place and it uh-huh. picks me up right there. When you have the Waymo, for example, it kind of tells you where to go in a manner of speaking. Oh, so they only so have says, specific okay, pickup, pickup locations. Over here. And it, and, it, and it literally guides you there. If you're not sure where it is, you can literally look at your, you look down at your phone. I have my iPhone in my hand. I like to walk out there. Okay, stop here, 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 turn right. You just like it, like one direction. If you walk too far, it'll tell you to go back. Mm-hmm. And so I did that at one time when I called the car and it pulled up right where I expected to pull up. And I had, and I gave it my destination. I already, if you put your, you program it just like you would a, a Lyft or a, in terms of your trip where mm-hmm. you want to go. But what was interesting about this, I suppose, was the you 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 have to unlock the vehicle with your phone. You know the, the doors are locked. You push the you push a button on your app, it'll pop the door handle out. Now you can open the vehicle oh, and get into it. Neat. And then when you when you buckle up and you hit the start a button in the on the dashboard in the car, and off it goes. And so really quick, were you in the front the, seat? Were you in the front seat or the back seat? Back. Okay, and there was a button for you to press. You in is it, does it say that was easy? Is it a? <laughs> it's a big red button. It says go, probably. Right? Well, it's not red; it goes blue. But um, okay. <laughs> if you, there's a dash, you could do it on your phone itself, or there's a little panel in the back that you have access to. Got it. Okay. okay. So you're pushing up, and I, I, I was going to pick up one of my uh, cats, the door of the vet. So I had to go pick him up, and and I I chose the route. I, I told him where I wanted to go. And what was interesting about this, it got there just fine. I just noticed one thing about about Waymo rides is they take a rather securitous route to what you might expect a human driver would do. Mm. With going through a lot of uh, residential area, things like that, in order to uh, to get there, it got me there just fine. It just took, took a route that I wouldn't have expected it would take. They're not allowed on the highway, right? I don't think they're allowed to go on the highway. No, although yeah. it's interesting. I, did, I, did, I got an email the other day from them that said that Starting soon or starting now, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., they're taking they'll take rides out to Sky Harbor Airport. Interesting. So they've got some sort of provisional option. I, I'm curious. How was the small talk with the driver? <laughs> I, I can't. It's, it's I pretty quiet. No, I mean, you it's yeah, pretty though, when you get in, when you get in the car, it talks to you. So you get in, you get in the vehicle and it says, "Well, welcome, welcome, Neil," and you know, tells wow. you much what's going to happen and so forth. And when you're ready to go, and you push <laughs> the button, then off it goes. It says your name. Uh, Costs the same money as a, as a regular Uber driver or Lyft. You know, there's no tip or anything like that, but it's the same amount of money. Are there locks on the doors? And did you hear it lock Junk. after you got inside? Yes. That's a feature probably of the iPace. You're in the Johnny cab. That's probably a feature of uh, the iPace itself. My car does the same Just thing. Just automatically so locks the doors. As soon as I get to a certain yeah. speed, it goes chunk to lock the uh, doors for safety. Yeah, it's, safety it's locked. It's really they don't want you it's jumping out of the yeah, limo. Right I, just, I just want to know about the full experience. Is it, it scary? It, if it would goes, be, I think it would be a little bit, for me, the first time I rode in, in something that didn't have a driver for it to lock oh, the doors. Oh, you've done this. No, no, no. I'm saying oh, it, if you were, if I was going yeah. to for the first time, yeah. I would get a little nervous whenever this robot, so to speak, locked the doors. And I understand that it's just the cars doing it, but it would feel a little bit like, oh, golly, I'm in complete, you know, I, I have no control over what's about to happen. I'm locked in this vehicle until it unlocks it. Uh, that would be a little bit worrisome. But it, you also had control over music and the, you know, it wasn't too hot in the car. You could change the AC, right? Yeah, you can control all of that. Um, like I say, it, it, it encouraged you to buckle up. It took me through that. Right? It was most, more, not concerning, but more curious that it took an odd route. Like a friend to a lot of residential area. It didn't take the most direct route that a human driver might have taken. That's it, interesting. Go. You know, that's a little telling. So it just took a different route. Yeah, that's one of the things we saw a lot in San Francisco sure. with, with Cruz and Waymo is they'd end up on st- streets that you probably wouldn't expect them to end up. Yeah. And a lot of the residential people complained about that. Because they were frankly. avoiding some of the busier places. 
places. Yeah, they're not- avoiding things like uh, unprotected left turns, mm-hmm. things that, you know, car these cars don't do well. Did you take it home afterward as well? Or did you use uh, Lyft or Uber to or something else to get home from the vet? Because I'm curious if it has any sort of sensors in it to determine, oh, you've actually brought two people into the car. In this case, there's a cat, a cat. in the car as well. <laughs> We're going to charge you double. Uh, I, it, I, no, I didn't do that. I didn't take the same route home, not because of that. I, 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 but I did take another trip uh-huh. uh, subsequent to that, which is interesting as well, because now, now, and I'll bring this up real quick here, was I had to go back from the vet, different trip, where I had gone back, mm-hmm. and I'm going out, and then had to go down a major street, and then there's road work there. Oh. But now it had to, now it had to, I have to deal with this road work. It's, it's, it's closing out, you have two, two lanes are going down to one. It doesn't like road work. merge right yeah. into that yeah. one. They're doing road work, and how's it going to manage that? And it managed it, but it, it went, it started going through it, then it decided, oh, I'm going to make a right turn over here, and I'm going to start going around <gasps> uh, through the residential area to try to get around this road work, yeah. which... Uh. Um, the thing that you don't it, it necessarily did, uh, know, but it turns out, I've read reports, happens more often than you think. There is a human uh, at the central office who can control that vehicle. And it is not unusual for a human. That would be a case, for instance, where I think the vehicle would say, hey, uh, this is problematic. There's construction. This doesn't match my map. Help, help. And the human may actually take over and override it and say, good, we're going to... Because I don't think the car is that smart that would go, oh, let's go around the construction. Let's turn right here. But a human may have intervened and may even be driving the car. And I don't know if they tell you that. Uh, I think that one of the... did not say anything to me. Yeah. One of the dirty little <laughs> secrets of these of all of these is that humans take over more often than we know. So... Just a thought. I, don't know was, I mean, I thought it was a positive. I, w- I would take the ride again. Sure, why twice. not? Now you didn't I'd feel unsafe any, yeah. at any time, did you? No. No. Cool. Oh, no. I never, I never felt unsafe. I was curious how it would handle these, uh, like I said, the road work, things like that. I was, I was kind of curious. Yeah, that's uh, that's challenging for these guys. Unsafe. Yeah. they Now they're on their own. It that's not been it. mapped out. Yeah, it didn't do anything wrong, you understand. Right. It just yeah. went to an odd route, I guess, is what I would say. Yeah, odd route. It wasn't wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, so I, I, thought I'd I am you, I very you grateful that you called us back to let us know yeah. how that went. I, yeah, yeah, I've been super curious about it. And it sounds like they're continuing to expand there versus what we're seeing locally, which is that there's lots of contraction happening. <laughs> um, so the fact that, you know, you got that right. notification saying, done, hey, we're doing more. Yeah, well, I'm going to say if I ever do a graveyard, you know, a red eye flight, I can take it to uh, Sky, Sky Harbor Airport now, but I'm not really, you know, sure I'm going to fly between 10 and 6 in the morning, <laughs> but uh, that's when they're, they're, at least they're trying to get out to take rides out there. Lovely. Yeah. Well, hey, thank, thank you. you for calling. Uh, take care. My Pre- pleasure. Appreciate Thanks it. for taking my great, call. Great update. Have a happy New Year. Happy uh, New Year. Happy New Year to you take as care. well. Take yeah, care. Uh, yeah. Cruz, Cruz, uh, I'm on the website, says we have temporarily paused driverless service. Uh, they fired a lot of employees and uh, they they basically backed off completely after the California regulators said, uh, hey, we've got a problem here. You better uh, stop driving temporarily. They decided to pull back completely. I think this is not working out quite as well as everybody thought. Not, would be not in the guess. short term. Not in the short term. You know, uh, we're going to go to our great photographer friend and we actually have a question for him right we do all right yes. so let's go to chris markwart discover the top ah. and he is a suitably dressed for what is undoubtedly <laughs> a cold winter's night hello chris i, I couldn't Hey, how's it going, everyone? I couldn't find my Santa hat, so I had to. Make this this is a lovely hat that you're did wearing. you did. Did you wear that yeah. in Svalbard? Oh no, I I picked this up years ago in Siberia. So. Siberia, oh, wow, oh. that's the real deal. Very nice and warm. Very yeah. nice and warm indeed. Yeah, yeah. probably. Too, let, let me take that off because it's, it's kind of you're gonna it, sweat. Indoors, it's, it's gonna start to sweat. Warm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you though have seen Santa's reindeer, I know, up uh, up in the uh, north. Of course, I have. Yes. Because he, uh, he absolutely used to lead expeditions. That was a crazy expedition because you were on a sailing ship, sailing around to- Svalbard. Yes, wow, that is that, that sounds wild. amazing. And some of your pictures of ice on the lines on the ship and stuff were just—it <laughs> made me cold just looking at. It. <laughs> 
Yeah, icing icing up chips. Um, it's fun if you have to if you have to get the big wooden mallet out and bang against the side of the ship to make sure it doesn't freeze up too much. <laughs> wow! So, yeah, wow! Well, that was an adventure, a real adventure. Not yeah. the first trip on my list of trips to take, but <laughs> but are you are you are you planning to go back to Svalbard anytime soon? Um, no plans for now, but I do want to go back because just the Arctic is, is a wonderful place. It's, yeah. um, it's cold in winter and you, you, the light up there, that's what I'm interested in as a photographer. Absolutely. Just the way that there's the particles in the air and the mountains reflect the light and the snow. It's, it's one of the most amazing lights Absolutely. on the planet that I've seen. It's well, so beautiful. we have an assignment from Mr. Marquardt mm -hmm. that we are going yes. to do our assignment review of. Uh, the word of the uh, of the week in the Tech Guy group, actually the word of the, did we go two months? I think we went a long time on this one. Was unusual. I, I, think, I think so. Yeah. It was unusual. Yeah. We have the unusual assignment. I have made uh, a choice of three photos. As usual, let me bring them up here on the screen. Um, thanks, everyone, for participating. This was not an easy choice. So lots of good stuff. Lots of unusual stuff. Yes. Yes, definitely. And uh, the first one I chose wow. is by Vibeke Fries. It's a sculpture. Um, I believe it's a Swedish artist who made it. It's a revolver with a with a knot in the, in the barrel. And uh, this one was painted by Paul McCartney. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Well. Very unusual kind of sculpture. Um, give peace a chance. I think it was for, uh, for John Lennon, actually. So Yeah, Vibeke um, says it was created by Carl Reutersvard, Reutersvard of Sweden as a tribute to John Lennon, who was, of course, assassinated by a lone gunman. Right. Um, and I th and so the, the work was sent to many famous people who painted them. And this one was Sir Paul McCartney's. Wow. Wow. That's that must have been for Paul quite a moving moment to paint. Probably. That. Yeah. Yeah. And and an unusual thing for sure. Absolutely. Wonderful sure. photo. So yeah. second one by our regular Demi Lent. Uh, it is <laughs> Alien <laughs> so, Keyboard. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Exactly. It's unusual. So what we're looking at is a, is an LED lit keyboard, colorful. But something's wrong with those letters because I, I I wouldn't even know. I mean the X like I can see the X there, but what is the thing next? Yeah, to Yeah, what is that in the middle? So, what is that thing in the middle? And of course, it's an upside down um, X C V on a keyboard. He messed around point. with his keyboard is what he did, yeah. or she did. It's just, yeah, it's it's just a I great, like very idea clever. Too. It's really sometimes great. sometimes it's super it's super fun to take a photo or take your camera and just turn it upside down or take a photo. And yeah, I think that's all down. it is, right? The keyboard's yeah. not modified. It's just an upside down picture. It's yeah. just an upside down picture. Yeah. And uh, that, that sometimes changes the entire thing. And it in does, this case, it, it makes it that. alien. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then last but not least, Street. I like this one by Greg, Gregory Chesney. Well, it's called doubles because what we see is a black and white street shot. It's, it's blurry. It's, it's shaky, but that doesn't really matter because uh, the content is so great. You see, doubles you see two women two men <laughs> two and two ladders, ladders. <laughs> <laughs> two, yeah. two, two. third gender ladders yeah I love it. I <laughs> you, love it. and you could almost you know if you had just sort of glanced at this and looked away you might think it was a double exposure and then your brain goes no no no, those are just sets that's of, so of cool. things yeah that's yeah. And, the, and the women are wearing something bright the men are wearing something black and the yeah. ladders are ladders so it's like fun, fun as, as with all street photography the key is the moment capturing the the right moment. And that is quite a moment. Very nice. Exactly. Thank you, Gregory. So well Very done. Very nice. Yeah. Very cool. And I, I encourage people to go to the Flickr group. It's the Tech Guy group. Now 14,000 members strong. Uh, and look at the other submissions because I can see why you had a hard time, Chris. There are really some great it's images. Such a good yeah. selection of photos yeah. there. It's hard, to, it's hard to say this one or that one. Um, we can, yes. and we only have limited time. We can't do more than three, but. There are so many interesting shots here. This one drew my eye. I don't know what's going on, but I. <laughs> that's uh, that's <laughs> wild. Yeah, that's honorable mention to Mitch XX. Um, yeah. All right. Well, you know what this means. Time to go to the fishbowl. 
Oh, here it is. Uh, the fishbowl. And we're going to... Here it is. I have the word clean. Man. Clean. clean. I love these. Clean. So here's how this I works. You're going to have four weeks, give or take, depending on Chris's schedule, to uh, look at it. Think about it and then go out. You got to take new pictures uh, because you, you've got to be pictures taken from today forward uh, that illustrate the concept clean, whatever that means to you. When you find one you like, tag it, TG for tech guy, clean, TG clean. Uh, upload it to Flickr, tag it TG clean, and then submit it to the tech guy group. Our moderator, the wonderful Renee, Renee Silverman, who's been with us now for years, hasn't she, Chris? Um a great, oh, yes. a great photographer in her own right. We'll, we'll welcome you to the group if you're not already a member and welcome your submission. Uh, this group's been around since May 2007, which is pretty, pretty amazing. And uh, we will give you at least four weeks to uh, submit some clean pictures, up to one a week, uh, to the Tech Guy group on Flickr. Now, we have a question for you, Chris, from our mailbag. Yes, this question comes in from Bill. It says... I will be checking off a bucket list item this coming February by going to a small island off the coast of Norway above the Arctic Circle at 70 degrees north to see the northern lights. Since 2024 is in the middle of the 11-year solar cycle, I hope for outstanding success. Wow. I plan on taking my Canon R5 with an RF 1435F4, excuse me, yeah, F4 lens and a GoPro 11 I have an RF 16 f 2.8 and an EF 815 f4 with an adapter for the RF. Should I take these lenses? Also, I have a Canon R if I need to take it. <laughs> it's a very specific so, question. Yes, and then <laughs> well, gonna, so a, let's start there. So the good news yeah. is Chris has been up there and has taken pictures of the Northern Lights and so forth. Oh yes. What do you recommend? Is, does he need a faster lens? That's not a very fast lens. Uh, the the two point eight that he he says there the uh, R sixteen two point eight that is a good lens for northern lights. The northern lights is the northern lights are they they vary depending on lots of things and of course uh, the magnetic field of the Earth and the, the the strength of the solar storm and so on, and they can be from very slow and very faint up to really bright like in a discotheque. They and they go zoom 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 and sometimes they just they just swell up and down a little and they move slowly. So it's it's hard to give you this one answer that covers everything because you will be surprised of them for sure. Um, How about a tripod? Also, is that useful with Northern Lights or is it handheld? Yes. Uh, tri tripod is a good starting point, of course, because you don't want to move the camera. Right. Sometimes you can get away with a short exposure, but usually you will expose for a bit longer. Well, let so, me yeah, let health. me ask well, these, that was a good idea. these next questions then, because this kind of touches on that. Uh, I hope to set these up outside and remotely control them for photos and videos while staying warm inside. <laughs> I'm planning on powering the cameras by wires running inside. Will this work? <laughs> okay. Um, I would advise against it because you will have to change settings on the camera depending on what these what these northern lights look like, how they express themselves. So you are going to be next to the camera and changing apertures and ch or not even apertures, changing the shutter speed to uh, regulate the brightness, maybe cranking up the ISO if they're too low. So I would say be next to the camera. Sometimes they come out for just 10 minutes and then they're gone again. Oh, so wow. you're not really gaining much by staying bring a inside. warm coat uh, <laughs> bring a warm coat bring bring warm boots that's even more important you can cold. get little yeah. heating pads little heating heating uh. pads in the shoes that will help you but being next to the camera and having everything there at, at your fingertips it is kind of the way to go and our, then, that, that's what works our good friend Svera, who's uh, in uh, norway uh our favorite norwegian uh, it's up in Tromsø, which is a very northern tip of uh, Norway, and he says there lots been, of northern lights up there. Yeah. He says there haven't been any for the last two weeks. Really? So oh. it's a little slow right now. That's the problem. It's yeah, not but predictable, then, but right? Then it, it, well, and and of course they have to come out. They don't always, and then of course the sky needs to be open. Right. Um, the, you can have the best northern lights, but if there's a cloud cover. It won't help you. So uh, it's a it's a bit of a gamble. And that's also why I recommend if you go to a place to specifically shoot the Northern Lights, don't make it just a couple of days. Make it a week. A week. Because that will increase your chances of, of uh, 
taking good now pictures. supposedly is a good time on thursday according yeah. to sun, uh, sun, sun activity solar activity yeah. is very strong right most yeah, powerful that's... solar flare in over six years yep Resulting yeah. in widespread radio blackouts, especially across South America. That's what Rod, Rod Pyle was saying. Yeah. Yes. And this is from the Space Weather Prediction Center of NOAA. And this is the last part of the question. Um, I have a plastic cover for the R5, and I have used dew heaters on my telescope. How do I protect the cameras from the elements, like the frost, the dew, and will I need a dew heater for the lens? These, these dew heaters are, are things that wrap around the barrel of the lens and are electrically powered and keep them warm. Those are really helpful if you are, if you have, if you leave, leave the camera outside for, I don't know, the entire night mm. to shoot long exposures of the, of the sky or something. Um, for northern lights, I don't think that's really helpful. Also a plastic cover. You have to be fast. Some, with some of the northern lights, you have to be fast. So a plastic cover has the chance of being in the way. Um, I always have a, a, here one of these with me, one of these uh, uh, cloths, uh, microfiber cloths, like from the kitchen um, in my pocket. And I just wiped on the camera and uh, a little bit of uh, precipitation on the camera won't hurt it. And if you wipe it off, you, you'll be just fine. The camera will be okay. All right. Well, that was from uh, listener Bill, and we thank you for yeah. your Bill, send us those pictures. I bet you're going to get some great ones. I want to see them. Yeah. Yeah. I've okay. never seen the Northern Lights. I always wanted to. So maybe I do have to go ah. to Svalbard with you. <laughs> it's it's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah. It's yeah. a bucket list for definitely my right? partner. So we'll I'll have to make it. Chris Marquardt, go to discoverthetopfloor.com to see what Chris is up to. You got some big uh, plans? Not, not for the holidays. We're gonna, we're gonna pull the blankets over our heads and watch <laughs> and, and watch indoors. dinner for one. Right? You're gonna <laughs> watch, watch that. Stuff. Yeah, I've I think I've seen this too many times now. It's getting. <laughs> we're, a bit. we're talking before the show about how, for some reason, this old British comedic sketch, which is in English, has become the thing to watch uh, around this time of year. In Germany, yeah. of all places. I, I used to love it as a kid. Uh, I think I've grown out of it over time. <laughs> Fair enough. Not, not, not that much into traditions. <laughs> it's a very strange tradition. That's all I can say. Yes. Uh, watch out for the tiger head. That's, uh, that, that, that rug will get you every time. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Chris. Happy so New much. Year. Happy right. holidays. Happy New we'll Year. We'll see you in four weeks. Chris Marquardt, our photo guy. Discover the top floor. Dot. Calm. Let's take a little break. Got a few more calls, a few more questions. Got a few more answers on Ask the Tech Guys. Who is uh, our next victim? I see Sunday the Piranha. Um, I'm actually going to pick up on Jeremy. They've been hanging out in the call for a little bit. Oh, thank you for being so patient, Jeremy. Let's, let's go to Jeremy. He's got his hand up. Jeremy, uh, press uh, whatever, and uh, I don't know. I don't <laughs> press know. Press whatever, do whatever. Whatever it is you have to do to say hello to Ask the Tech Guys. Hey, Leo. Hey, Micah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Hi, Jeremy. Can, Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Dayton, Ohio. Lovely. Welcome. What's up? So, um, I have a. Uh, two and a half year old son and a nine month old daughter. Oh, and boy. well, at least for my son, he's very much into electronics already. Oh, nice. Got a lot of home automation stuff, color changing lights and all that stuff. And he, he absolutely loves it. And oh. like, he really seems like he's got a knack for electronics and trying to get him more and more into that, you know, and I'm just thinking ahead for the future. Do you guys have any recommendations for like, um, things to get them started into computer programming and that kind of thing or activities. Do you think he's them. more into hardware or software? I mean, he's only two and a half. I know. It, he's not yeah, into anything. No, I mean, it's, it's harder right now, but you know, it's just been a question I've kind of had on my mind for a little bit. So just, uh, there have been some really cool, uh, you know, and again, he is really too, too young for this, but there have been very cool kits where you snap together, he might not be too young with daddy's help. We call it lapware, right? Uh, where you sit there and help him. 
where you snap together electric components. You don't have to solder them. You don't even have to get something. It's fiddly. It just magnetically snaps together. And you can, it turns on lights. It makes motors whir. It, it would be a busy box for an advanced, very smart, it sounds like he is, a uh, two and a half year old. Let me see. Ah, uh, this is what I was thinking of. There's a, a company called KiwiCo, K I W I Co, and they have STEM stuff for uh, people for children zero to two, three to four, five to eight, nine to eleven, and twelve and up. Um, all sorts of different STEM stuff. And so, what's great about it is you can kind of grow. It grows with the kid over time. You can add more. They have different subscriptions, and so you get these little kits that have a bunch of different stuff made for your kid's age. Uh, these are, the, I think the ones I was thinking of snap circuits. But as I look at this, it probably isn't for a two-year-old. It's certainly got parts you could choke on. So, um, oh, yeah. but maybe in a few years, it's nice because they just snap together. These Remember we used to have as kids, we used to have, uh, you know, chemistry sets oh, and uh, heath sets. kits. And there were all sorts of things for kids. And you know, I'll give you a couple more. Our friend Mike Elgin's uh, son does a really cool project that's based on an Amazon. But again, this is more for like a fourth, fifth and sixth grader based on a, a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's called Get. What is it? Chatterbox. Chatterbox. Thank you. Go to getchatterbox.com and uh, you can buy it. And it what the thing I like about it Again, not for a two-year-old. I'm sorry, hello, chatterbox.com. Not for a two-year-old, but for an, a, 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 you know, a grade schooler, uh, depending on how precocious. <clears throat> this is being used in school curriculums to teach kids about AI, voice assistance, so that they understand that it isn't some person in the box. They actually code it. And this is the kind of coding kids can do uh, because it's drag and drop little components. So you don't know yet what your wonderful two and a half year old is going to be into. He's pretty little right now for almost uh, anything. But uh, I think watch carefully with interest and he'll give you some hints about what direction he's going in. I would also bookmark Adafruit Industries. They're a Raspberry Pi store, but they have a lot of wonderful um uh, gifts. In fact, they have a gift guide right now for this. Again, is going to be older kids, but Adafruit uh, at Adafruit.com has so much fun stuff and lots of oh. little kits. And as he gets older, you're are you kind of into it too? Definitely. I mean, I was on Adafruit earlier looking at some oh, LED yeah. stuff or yeah, you know, different yeah. projects at home. So if so. you're into it, that helps a lot because it's a great thing that you and your boy can do together. Uh, as he gets a little bit older, um, and they have and they have uh, lots of beginner kits, uh, and you know, actually, I'm looking at the young engineers section, and I think there probably are some things that you could probably even do with a with a two year old at this point. Um, well, I'll be honest that that chatterbox one you mentioned earlier. That looks like a fun project oh, for me that, I, that so he could cool. just observe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. you would have fun with it, and you know, in a few years. Thing is, the whole thing is he's. It's a great look. The most important thing you can do right now is spend time with him mm -hmm. and, and love him up. And so, if he's interested in this stuff, have a few of these projects. You can be doing them at first yourself, and then as he gets older, he'll want to get into it. and uh, And that's a great way to get him started. And if he has that kind of mindset, don't be disappointed if he wants to be a ballet dancer, though. You know, you got to let him, got to let him be what he wants to be, right? Yeah, that the one I was talking Definitely. about earlier, by the way. Uh, kiwico.com yeah it even starts with what they call the panda crate and oh, it nice. has all of these tools for uh, their three to six stage specific products but then each of these teaches six to ten developmental skills and then you kind of move along after you finish the panda crate for someone zero to 36 months uh, ages three to four, they move on to the koala crate, oh. which makes it more involved. So they really do have young, very young, young yeah. kid stuff. That's good. That and this is like all STEM, STEM stuff. We'll so. put a link to all of this in the uh, show notes because I think there are a lot of parents who would love to do this with their kids. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it sounds hey, like a lot of fun. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Merry Christmas. Yeah. You're a lucky guy. You're going to have a good Christmas with two babies in the house, two little ones. How fun. Yeah, definitely. And I, I was going to say, you know, 
followed the Twit Network for a long time, Leo. Thank I think you. I even watched you on Tech TV. So when you I, were I a little, one. Going to do <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, that's wonderful. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. It's our pleasure. And yeah, spend time with both those kids. And you know, if they want to play catch, play catch. If they want to, you know, go to the theater, take them to the theater, whatever it is. The most important thing. The one and only thing that really matters is is the is the time you spend with them and the love you give them, and then everything else is gravy. Uh, but I think it's fun to do the idea of doing these if, if he's interested. Yeah, you know that's really cool. That's really cool. Sounds fun. Hey, I can't believe we're uh, we're through. We're done. We're wow. out of time. Uh, but we're going to be back in three weeks. Mm -hmm. We're gone for a couple of weeks. We'll be back next year. Next year. This is our last show of the year. Uh, we're taking the next two weeks off. No best of from us. No holiday special. We're lazy and we just, uh, this is it. This is all you're going to get. Uh, we, we drank too much eggnog and we forgot Ugh. our homework and the dog ate the best of. Uh, boy producer John Ashley was getting tired of being called boy wonder producer. Oh, oh, oh this is the so. payback. Okay, payback to you know what. Well, okay. Uh, nobody suffers except the people at home, but okay. Don't email John. It wasn't, that's not no, actually true. No, it wasn't fine. his choice. Uh, but we did, uh, we do want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful holiday. We hope you come back January 7th. Yes. And every Sunday thereafter, we will be here answering your questions 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern. It's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time, 1900 UTC. Uh, I mentioned those times because you can't actually watch a live stream of the show. Uh, we stream it on YouTube. So go to youtube.com slash twit. Uh, if you if you hit the bell there, it'll it'll let you know when we go live. We go live when any show, any of our given shows that we uh, we put together streams, we go live on YouTube. So that's a good place to see it. If you're a club member, of course, you can watch it in the Club Twit Discord and interact with us. And I really want to encourage you to become a club member. You know, one of the things, and by this actually applies to our last caller too. One of the things uh, that is I've noticed, um, and maybe you have too. I don't know. The last, in the early days of technology, it was very exciting. Every day, it seemed like there was a new innovation. There was something new that was very exciting. The last five years, it's kind of gotten ho-hum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the new iPhone has a better camera. <laughs> right, right. It's not, It the, the, the developments in technology have just not been as exciting over the last couple of years. And frankly, I was thinking, yeah, maybe it is time to retire. Maybe technology now is just part of the fabric of our lives yeah, and and uh, nothing interesting is happening. Then along came AI, and I am of the you know opinion, and it's getting firmer every day that the next few years are going to be wild. Mm -hmm. That stuff is going to happen that we don't even imagine today. This is not the equivalent of the uh, personal computer revolution or of the internet revolution. In my opinion, this is more like first contact. This is more like a new species arising among us. Something very different, very weird that will change everything. everything. Mm -hmm. And that, while it's a little scary perhaps, also is very exciting. And it's given me a new reason to want to keep doing our shows. You know, we're here to help you understand technology so you can use it. Sometimes so you can defend yourself against it. But that's our job is to help you understand technology. And for a while I was feeling like, well, maybe we don't, maybe we're not needed so much anymore. I think the next couple of years are going to be wild ride. And I think we do need to do this job. And you need to have a place you can go where you can get information you can trust about what it all means, how it works, and what you can do about it. And that's going to be twit going forward. But as you know, it's been a very tough year for us. And next year was looking like it was even tougher. We had to make some cutbacks, cancel some shows, let some hosts go. But we're in a good financial footing now. We want to stay that way. It's going to take two things. It's going to take good sales. And we're working as hard as we can to sell ads on all of our shows. But it's also going to take your help, Club Twit. Uh, we started Club Twit two years ago because we saw this coming. This is going to be vital for our continued success. Right now, just a little more than 1% of our viewers and listeners subscribe to Club Twit. We would like to get that. We need to get that up to two, at least, to survive next year. If we can get it to three, four, or 5%, 
then we can go forward and continue our mission. And we want to do that. Seven bucks a month. That's all it costs. $84 a year. Their family plans, their corporate plans. It supports what we're doing. It keeps our shows on the air, keeps our staff employed, keeps the lights on. And you get ad-free shows, you get the Club Twit Discord, you get additional content like Micah's hands-on Macintosh. iOS Today is moving into the club, mm -hmm. uh, and I think you and Rosemary have some really great plans for it, but that's going to be a club exclusive. Another reason why you need to join Club Twit. So if you would, go to twit.tv slash club twit. Uh, look, I'll be honest with you, I could retire, um, and I'd be perfectly happy. Uh, but I don't want to. I think we have a job to do. I think, Micah, you're not ready to retire. You've got a job to do. <laughs> and I think with if you tell us that you want us to do that by joining Club Twit, we will do it. But you need to do that. You need to tell us, yes, Micah, Leo, Rosemary, all of our hosts, we want you to keep doing what you're doing. We need that information. I think This Week in Google is going to very quickly become This Week in AI. I think all of our shows are going to very quickly, including this one, move in the direction of helping you understand AI, mm -hmm. use AI. Uh, this is going to be a wild ride, and we want to be there for you. Show us you want us. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. I promise you, you won't regret it. It is, it is going to be something you're going to be glad to have in the years to come. Uh, that's it for our show. Uh, you can call us at 888-724-2884 and leave a message if we're not live. Yep. You can also email us atg at twit.tv. Leave your text and we'll get that. Or you can also leave audio or video. What are you doing with iOS today? Are you going to have a best of for iOS today? Uh, there's not a best of for okay. iOS today either. So it's going into the club. When's the first show in the club? The first show in the club will be on January 4th. Okay. Uh, and we actually had a, on Tuesday, we had, was it this past Tuesday? No, it's this coming Tuesday. We'll have even more. No, no, no. It was on, <laughs> that's right. On Friday, December 15th, if you were a subscriber to the show, you would have, gotten you would have learned feed. about it. And then okay. we'll have a little bit more information too. So, so subscribe. You can, by the way, this is a, all of our shows are, are, are podcasts. And since you can subscribe to them in a podcast player or on YouTube, each of them has a YouTube channel, uh, so get that last episode in public, mm -hmm. join the club, and then you'll get future episodes of iOS Today. And you've got some good play. I'm really excited yeah. what you're doing with it. Yeah. I think it's going to be really a great uh, program. But again, it all depends on you. Um, I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Micah Sargent. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I hope you had a great Hanukkah. I hope your Festivus is full of grievances. And, I, and if you celebrate Christmas, a Merry Christmas to you. 2024 is going to be an interesting year. I hope it's joyous for you, peaceful and successful. Uh, and we hope you'll be right here with us all next year. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twit, which costs seven bucks a month. Or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of Home Theater Geekitude.